How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, Skylin. What beverage do you have while you're lurking? Coffee. Ah. Well, I have... Wellington Creek. It's a bourbon distilled in Miami of all places and finished in Pinot Noir barrels. Interesting. It's not bad. But somehow... Miami and Pinot Noir don't sound like things that would normally go together. know if you guys have the um, the big box uh, stores called uh, Total Wine up there where you are because I think you told us one Sunday you're in Canada um, but we have them here and they they carry spirits and wines from all over the world and a large selection of spirits from right here in the Sunshine State. Hello, James. How are you doing? Good. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. Just chatting with Skylin, who is on the chat already. Okay. How was your week? Uh, good. Just shelled out 700 bucks to make a repair on my Yukon, which was great. Oh, yeah. Well, now here's the question though. Is it paid off? Oh yeah. I have, uh, I have five vehicles and, uh, four of them are paid off. See now, now, okay. And, 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 the, only, and the only reason number five isn't paid off is because it's 0% interest. So I'd, I'd right, rather yeah. earn the interest than, you know, sure. Not. Sure. The family your size, Yukon, is a perfectly reasonable vehicle. Um, and the other thing is, uh, I have found over time, because I'm the type of person that I'll buy a car, I'll pay it off, usually within two to three years, and then I drive it until it really starts until I'm starting to almost make monthly repairs on it. <laughs> because, well, yeah. Because it feels like it feels like they have designed vehicles that as soon as as soon as the warranty runs out, things start falling apart. Yeah, my U, my Yukon's got about one hundred and eighty thousand. My Honda minivan has got about one hundred and ninety thousand. Uh, then I've got a Chevy Volt that has ninety thousand i think no it doesn't have that i don't know and then a nissan leaf that's got like thirty thousand. Mm, mm. let me guess you use the electric vehicles to drive back and forth to work with 
Yeah, for most. Yeah, the yeah. The, the volt for my kids in traffic. high school, and uh, my Leaf <laughs> is like a commuter car. But my commute's not bad at all. I, yeah. I'm not even really in traffic that bad. And then the Yukon is a nine seater. That's the only vehicle when our whole family's together. It's the only vehicle we can all. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, big uh, fam. Yeah. I would. Uh, I would not drive into that town i would just take the metro uh, going if i had to work there uh and skyland yes uh florida is called the sunshine state because uh well the the rumor is that we have sunshine uh, well over 300 days a year and we usually do but uh, we also get quite a bit of rain here uh, the thing about Florida rainstorms is it can be sunny two hours later, the sky can be dark and you can have thunderstorms and an hour after that it can be sunny again. So we get sun most days, uh, but we can get some pretty big thunderstorms. It's not like some parts of the world where uh, the day starts gray and it just stays gray all day long. <laughs> That's very rare here. All right. It was nice and gray oh, here today. Okay, so we have. Hey, welcome, Paul. How are you doing? I'm doing a bit sick, but I'm here and ready to Ooh. Run. Okay. Well, uh, I can hear it a little bit in your voice, uh, but uh, just stay hydrated and we will try not to make you talk too much. <laughs> All right. It's because yeah, you drink too much. It's because you drink too much ale. That's, drink too uh, much dwarven uh, ale. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some more ale sitting right here. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I learned a lesson from Sunday. The lesson I learned is do not trust that the um, uh, Apple player is going to. Uh, stop. So instead, turn the volume all the way down. And then I'm just going to double check that. Yes, the volume. Volume is all the way down. All right, cool. Okay, so we will not have uh, music as wonderful as it may be in our in our game tonight. All right. Uh, last time we were here. For the Sword Coast Chronicles, our heroes were in a bit of a fight. Uh, they had been uh, performing a concert for the benefit of King Horgar Steel Shadow, and their um, their temporary ally, uh, Abjur Holder, had given the king true seeing, which meant he was able to see that his concubine was not, in fact, a lovely Duragar lass, but was instead a succubus, uh, a lovely and yet very deadly uh, and horrible demon. And that very much shocked the king, and so a fight broke out. Well, uh, she was banished, but not before she said something about uh, her lord rising. And then somebody came running in at the end of that first round of combat and told everybody, oh my goodness, there's a uh, there's something uh, coming up in the Dark Lake. And uh, what I want to do is I want to just double check. Okay. Um, let me send a real quick message here. I haven't heard anything from Ken, so I presume that he is going to be here tonight. Um, so let's. Uh, he just uh, popped he, up. He, yeah, he's showing up on Discord now. Oh, oh okay. He just popped into Discord. Okay. Uh, he was not there a moment ago. All right, great. Wonderful. 
So, uh, I think the we were at the end of a round, which means that Thalador is up first. So, uh, yeah, Falisher has a few minutes uh, before we need him in the combat. So, uh, the Durgar Stone Guards had just finished. A Durgar Stone Guard came running in to yell about something rising in a dark lake, and Thalador. Um, yes, yes. Y- you are now up. Uh, just to recap where we are logistically, you have this particular um, demon that is attacking guards. Uh, it is surrounded. There are several other... Uh, these other demons over here are mesmerized by uh, Mulek's spell. And then... Um, there are several other demons uh, over here and over here that are uh, attacking uh, guards uh, not pictured on the uh, on the map. So, uh, what would you like to do? I think I'm going to uh, let's see. What's the Rutskin? Is that what that is? Rutterkin. Rutterkin, yeah. Since I can see one straight in front of me, I'm going to take a pot shot at it with my uh, with my crossbow. Okay. All right. That, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, it's a crossbow. You, your short distance is 75, so I think you're well within that. Yeah. Yeah, you're well within that range. So you're not even making yeah, a... Yeah, I'll hit him. Not even taking a shot with disadvantage. 13. Okay, let's see. Actually, 13 is good enough to hit. So go ahead and deal some damage. Okay, so that's a... Um, you know what? I'm going to say, even though they're not pictured, he is fighting some guards. So you do have uh, allies within five feet. So you'll get that full 19. Nice. uh, Which does, in fact, um, bloody the creature. Uh, Wait, let me just double check. Oh, okay. Uh, And on that, I will just stay there and end my turn. Okay. All right. Uh, Mulek, you are up. All right. I'm going to command uh, Rocky and Egon to attack uh, this creature right in... Oh, let me see. This creature right in front of them. So let me pull up there. All right, so uh, so Rocky will go first, and we'll do a. Uh, let's see. Um, I guess he'll do a bite attack. Eleven. Okay. Eleven uh, against this guy. It's not quite gonna hit. Okay, and then uh, Egon's gonna try to bite him as well. Ooh, 24. Yeah, that will hit. And let's see. Do I roll? Let's see. What did it do? Uh, uh, it, it does five damage, and the two would be the, <laughs> the crit if it were. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so just five damage. Okay. Is the... Is the giant weasel considered, is his bite considered a magical attack? Uh, no, unless you count them as magical in and of themselves. I don't okay. think. I think it's just a normal okay. bite. Okay. Yeah. Then he feels that, but he doesn't, it doesn't take quite as much damage as you would expect it to. Okay. And then I will uh, also, on my for my action, um, I'm going to move, take a few steps, get a better view of them, and then, whoops, too far, and then cast Toll the Dead on him. Okay. So, 
DC 16 wisdom save in his future. Ooh, and he oh. succeeds. Man, it's so, totally good. It's not good. Yeah, because it's a cantrip, it's an all or nothing, right? There's no half damage. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, it's all or nothing. Yep. Okay. Oh, and so that is uh, Mulek's turn. Yep. Not much going on. O K do K. Uh, then let us see the abjurer. What will abjurer holder do? Uh, do to do to do to do do to do do. He just says, Okay, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. He slowed the guy with Ray of Frost last time. Uh, so he's just going to go ahead and try that again, um, and see if that works. So that's, uh, okay, but it didn't roll for him. Dadgummit. All right. So... All right, so I will. What is his spell attack? Plus eight. So we will do a d20 plus eight attack and see if that hits. Well, dead on. 16. All right, so he is a. What level caster? He's that level caster, which means that. His ray of frost will do 13 points of damage. All right. Um, and he remains uh, slowed, and now he's bloodied. All right. And the this Babao will bleed. And Falajur. Hey Ken, we see you in roll twenty. Are you? You are. We see you in Discord. Are you logged into roll twenty yet? Doing as I speak. Okay. Yeah, I had my tooth pulled yesterday. Talking about fun. Ooh. Hmm. But I'm good. I'm on some meds. I'm all right. <laughs> This was apparently the week for that because there was two people in the Saturday night game that were also having tooth pulled, teeth pulled this week. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna have to have to quit um, putting monsters out that hit you guys in the jaw so hard. Ah, <laughs> right. <clears throat> All right, so we're, we're waiting for Fowler's screen to come up. Okay. Um, so you are up here. The the uh, active enemy in the fight against everybody is right here. Uh, Faldor did go ahead and start expanding the fight by uh, attacking this guy over here um and uh so you can did you mean to move him no i didn't mean oh. to move him i don't know why he moved annoying 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 all right he, he flew away <sighs> yeah well now i have a question this succubus before she she was like prepare make way for my lord oh never mind it was coming out of the lake or something yes. got it okay um well everybody's so okay 
Bloop. I'll swing on this guy. Because mm, why okay. not? Okay. A 21 will hit. Um, for eight points of damage. Uh, is that a... It is a magical weapon, so you you get all of that damage on him. Uh, uh, Kinred, did he use? I gave him inspiration mm-hmm. last week before we left. Did you? Did you use it? I don't remember. Yes. Uh, okay. To hammer well, home I, the crossbow bolt into the guy's chest. Mm, all right. I'm going to give him another inspiration. And then that's my turn. Okay. All right. So this Babao, what is he able to do? Okay. He is in a target rich environment. So. He is going to hmm. All right, he is going to go ahead and uh, He is going to look at now nah, he's just going to attack people. He's not going to waste anything. Uh, let's figure out uh, who's right around him. Uh, he is going to try to attack people that are keeping him from getting to the king. So he is going to try to attack this guy here. And he's going to do that with... Um, his claw attacks. So first attack is eleven. Second attack is a twenty-six. This is a crit. Hey, not. So <laughs> deals uh eleven points of damage to this guard. Um, which does not bloody him. And then he attempts to use his uh, attempts to use his weakening gaze, and so that means that the guy needs to make a saving throw, Constitution save, DC thirteen. Oh, and he fails. So now this guy that just got attacked, he is, well, it's going to look like he's strong, but actually he's weak. Um, He is weakened. So hopefully we get back around to those guys. We recall what that is. Um... This guy stands and drools. This guy stands and drools. Krenraid, you have a nasty demon in front of you who's covered in frost a couple of times over. Perfect for a a bit of modeling then. (laughs) So uh, feeling inspired, I'm going to... um recklessly attack with my hammer and try and uh, sculpt something. It's not going to go well. Restraint is not something that uh, Conrad's very good at. This will have the uh, Divine Fury because I'm still raging. Ooh. Ooh. 26 definitely hits. 12 and 6. 18 points of damage. Um... He is rocked and nearly topples. Do you have a second attack? Mm-hmm. Was the mall was the mall magical? 
The more yes. itself is not magical, oh, okay. but the, the uh, divine radiance makes it magical for that singular attack it's part of. It's like part of the event. Yeah. Oh. Second attack is not, so this is that. Gotcha. Second attack is, that's yeah, that's the way we were doing it last week. Okay, second attack is um, non-magical. Uh, so non-magical, that'll deal seven damage. Kren Raid, how would you like to kill this demon? After Fallajur gives me a nod and a little little pick me up i'm feeling pretty good about it you know I, I think about what worked the last time and i've got good short-term memory just not very good long-term memory so i'm just gonna start smacking on the chest as hard as i can as he turns around to try and sneer at me <laughs> okay and with a mighty uh mighty crash of the mall the uh demon falls Okay. Um, now, uh, when that happens, uh, several additional things happen. A phalanx of the stone guards hustle the deep king um, out of the back of the hall. So... We're going to say there are um, there are several of these um, uh, stone guards that will form uh, form up on the king and um, they will uh, start to pull away, and um, as they do, the abjur says, Oh, my leech, uh, what are your instructions about the succubus? And uh, he says, says, if you, can, if you can maintain concentration, just send it back to the abyss. Uh, want, want to see that creature no more. And he says, yes, my leech. And uh, so a couple of the guards stand over near where the succubus was. The rest of them uh, go and start uh, confronting and uh, cutting down these rudderkin, who turn out to be relatively easy to kill. So uh, we're not going to make you guys go ahead and fight against those. Uh, we're just going to say that the guards get those down. Uh, now you guys have a couple of you guys have a couple of options that you can do. Um, would you or, or well, what would you like to do? Well, we still have these two babao that uh, are going to become unincapacitated in the next 40 seconds or so. Okay. So Holdar is over there by himself. Maybe we should go grab him. Go protect my kin. <clears throat> okay. Do Felix. we... Go ahead. Oh, out of character. Do we, do we leave this crap for the guards? Who are more incapable of dealing with these guys, and then go see what's up with the lake? Or and there's also know? these. Well, these are also these maw demons. Did you say that the guards are also going? Yeah, after the they're the maw demons. They are up on the balcony, mm -hmm. and um, they are. Uh, it it appears like there's like three or four of them, and in the time that it's taken you to deal with these guys, mo those. Uh, the guards appear to be facing off with the maw demons and most of the crowd appears to be out of the way of that fight. And it kind of looks like, okay, they're going to, they might have some casualties, but it looks like the guards are going to prevail in that because you can hear more booted feet running up to the balcony. And guys, we uh, need to run. I should probably get my armor on at some point. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna run, we should uh, let the guards know that these babao are gonna come. I mean, these babao are pretty powerful. They're they're gonna become unleashed here uh, any moment, or we can just gang up on one, take it out, and then gang up on the other one and take it out. Um, the 
the guards will say, uh, "Heroes, if you can, if you can take those down or somehow deal with them, uh, that would be appreciated." And then I think, uh, and I think the king would like to see you in his chambers uh, once you've dealt with that. Uh, we just tie may... them up. Uh, probably not. The They're demons have demons. all kinds of spikes and horns but, and everything uh, on them. Sense. They can probably cut through that. Um, okay. Strategy-wise, how do you? How would you guys deal with that? All four of you on a single one. I'd, I'd grapple one of yeah, them. Yeah, I, I was gonna. S- the rest. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna send Rocky to go try and attack one and knock it prone. Uh, first, first off, and then. Yeah, just start whacking at it. We yeah, we were gonna we're gonna gang up on them one at a time, okay. basically. Well, and then the abjurer will help you with that. So uh, let's just say that between his rather potent magical attacks and your, um, you know, five or six of you, uh, including the animals, on uh, a single demon. That one gets knocked down, and then perhaps by that time the other one is coming out of its uh, stupor. But by then, everybody just dogpiles it. So uh, it didn't have a chance. Yeah, it didn't. It it basically doesn't have a chance. It's uh, the this is the kind of fight where, yeah, you, your your strategy at the beginning of the fight has helped you win the day because you took a number of the enemies um, out of the picture and then with the guards dealing with the basically dealing with the with the trash mobs you guys were able to deal with the uh, bigger threats and get those down so uh, it'd be a bunch of extra dice rolling that wouldn't really change the outcome so i'm willing to just forego that uh now uh you have been told that the king would probably like to see you uh Valager, uh has the realization that it would probably be a good idea to have his armor on so would you guys like to run quickly back to your rooms gather your gear let him get um let yes. him get uh, yeah, armor up. Abs- yeah. Absolutely. Go back and get out of these clothes and get, get in our normal okay. gear and then head off to the king. Save yourself. I'll okay. Keep okay, that sounds like a plan. I'll just Let take us... the cloak I'm wearing off and shove it in my rut sack. Okay. Uh, let us say then that um, okay, where is our where is our slate? Um, do I have a slate for us? I guess I don't have a slate for us. Uh, okay. Uh, let's just go back to the uh, to the streets of Gacklestug. Grackle stuck. All right. So you guys are uh, over here in the hold of the Deep King. And uh, you um, get you get all changed and run to the throne room. And um, the king is there with uh his advisor, the Seneschal, is there, and uh, the Abjurer is there by the time you get there. And uh, the king says, I, what is happening? Oh, somebody said the city is under attack. And uh, the Seneschal says, yes. Uh, my lord, it appears that there is a disturbance in, in the Dark Lake. Uh, Something has risen, and it is hurling boulders at the uh, Darkling district. 
and it appears to be moving closer. Uh, oh, gods. Something is throwing boulders from the Dark Lake. Uh, oh, what are we talking about? Are we talking about... Uh, talking about some kind of aquatic giant? Well, sir, um, I don't know how... don't know how reliable the reports are, but they're telling me it's a creature that, that appears to have two heads. Two heads. Uh, people in the Dark Lake District are drinking. Somebody go and get me a reliable report. I need to know what's going on. And that's about the time that you guys walk in. And uh, the Seneschal says, Oh, my lord, uh, the Bard Fallager and his companions are here. Oh, oh, splendid. Oh, lads, oh, please, please, come in, come in, come in, says the king. Your grace. Uh, oh, uh, yes, well, I, uh, I seem to, oh, my head is aching. I seem to be, I seem to be not quite myself. I don't know what has, what has happened. I, I'm told that these last few months I've been acting very, very strangely. That woman, she did something. I suppose it wasn't a woman, it was a demon. After all, I... Uh, I can't believe I was so foolish as to fall for uh, fall for the charms of a demon like that. But uh, it appears the city is in danger. Uh, you, I am already in your debt for uh, for your aid, and uh, I would talk to you about uh, matters that we discussed earlier in the day, but. Uh, but for now, the city is in danger. I would like you to go with a patrol of my guards and see if perhaps you can uh, make sense of what is happening in the Dark Lake. I understand that it's under attack by some sort of creature with two heads. A creature with two heads? Like it's carrying a head and has a head, or it has two heads? Well, uh, that's partly what I would like to find out. You got all it. All I've heard is all I've heard is that it has two heads. If there's anything that you can, anything that you can do, uh, please uh, do so. If you feel like. This is a situation where uh, the guards need to take the lead. Uh, you can let them. If you feel like other measures are needed, then please uh, somehow get a hold get a hold of us. Uh, do any of you do any of you have any kind of magical means of of communicating from the from the lake shore back here to the deep hold? Yes. Ah, good. Well, you can send a message to me or my seneschal or the abjur or whoever. Um, uh, whoever you think could be uh, best to help us. Mulek looks, looks, Mulek looks around and says, you know, trying to gauge the other party members and yeah. We're going to go do this? Should we go take a look? Might as well. My cousin has a pub right next to the shore. We've got to get her out. All those other people do. I, I, I guess that you've already told them all to move away from the water, right? And the guards say, yes, uh, we've, given, we've given the order to evacuate all of the uh, shoreside uh, structures. Uh, there are a uh, there are a few fishermen who have their huts there, and of course, uh, some of them, they're not going to leave until somebody picks them up and carries them away. But most of the rest of them seem to be 
showing some sense and getting out of there. I think most of the people from the Shattered Spire were fleeing. Oh, sounds like you may need to pick some of those those fishermen up forcefully if you have to. They're going to get in the way otherwise. Well, if it's if it's safe for the guards to do so, we will. Um, but uh, when you tell somebody to do something, if they choose to be if they choose to be foolish, sometimes well, they just have to learn the hard way. Can't argue that. And uh, so the king says, "Yes, please, uh, with all haste, get get to the Dark Lake District and uh, let some of let somebody know what's going on." Uh, and then he says, "And Falajur, uh, there'll be a there'll be a nice reward for your for your performance tonight. It was first rate." <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it, Your Highness. One could he's, say if it is even enlightening. He's yeah. still thinking of the performance. <laughs> it was very eye-opening. Mm. <laughs> Did it broaden your horizons, Your Majesty? And several, several of the guards can't help but chuckle a little bit, and even the king seems to have a wry smile on his face. He says, well, "That's that's not important. Let no. Let's let's see what's happening in the." Come the, on, baby, light my fire. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you guys are going to head out then? Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Straight to the dark oh, lake. Make haste. Okay, as soon as you get out of the... Um, as soon as you get out of the hold of the Deep King, uh, you notice a couple of things. You notice that there are shouts and uh, screams of people. You also notice that above the shouts and the screams of people, there is a roaring. Um, the roaring like a like an enormous creature. And it doesn't quite sound like um, the noise of a dragon. Um, and in fact, as you all come out of the hold of the Deep King and start sprinting towards that furrow, you catch sight just beyond the furrow. You catch sight of a large red shape flying towards the lake. Um, and that shape presumably would be uh, Thimberchot. So, you know, it's like there's, there's uh, stalactites uh, or columns of rock and whatnot. And so, you know, you can kind of see it flashing uh, beyond those as it's, uh, you know, sort of weaving its way through, uh, making its way over uh, towards the lake. And then as you all manage to get through the uh, gate here, you look out into the lake and um, – or as soon as you open the gates, there's a bunch of people uh, that are there, and um, they are all kind of gathered right near the gates. And I guess actually the gates are already open, and there's there's been some people streaming through the gates coming into this part of the city. But uh, – as you get there, there's a whole bunch of other people that are kind of right there by the gates. They're kind of those people that are like, okay, well, I want to be near the gate, so if I have to go through, I can, but I kind of want to see what's going on here. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's sort of those people. And you do sort of catch a glimpse. Out in the lake, there is a creature 
that appears to be wading towards the city. And um, the creature, you can see there's at least 30 or 40 feet of the creature is sticking up out of the water. Um, and indeed, it has two heads. And these two heads uh, vaguely are reminiscent of um, baboons. And you guys know what a baboon head looks like because um, of the bag of tricks. So you all have seen baboons around uh, when Mulek has, uh, you know, pulled out one of these fur balls. But imagine a baboon that, if if you could see it from its feet, would stand at least sixty feet tall, if not taller, with two heads. And when those mouths open, uh, they are full of jagged, sharp teeth. They also appear to open into chasms of flame, and the eyes appear to open into chasms of flame. And then the arms, they reach out, and for about three-quarters of the arms, they appear to be primate-type arms. but then. Almost where the top of the wrist would be, instead of hands being attached, there are on each arm two long, very long, probably 100 foot long serpent like tendrils that come out of the end of each arm. And this thing is screaming and heading towards the uh, shoreline. I, that is what you see. What I the fuck? A, I want to do a religion check. I okay. prob- as a cleric, I might know what this is. but Okay. Go I ahead and sp- make it. I do uh, speak infernal as well. Um, goodness, I'm going to inspire myself. I'm not inspired, but uh, guidance. Okay. I'm starting to pray at this point. This thing looks like a science experiment gone bad. Whatever he said. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, um, <sighs> you know, Fallisher, I'm going to give you. Uh, because, because. Because uh, now I'm not going to let you have a roll that bad. Just go ahead and roll and roll again. <laughs> okay. This you know is bad. kind of this is you know kind of be like demonology 101 for. Okay. All right. So let's just say you have advantage on that. So let's <laughs> okay. Here, with your 21. <laughs> You know it's bad when he gives you fucking reroll and advantage. Quadruple advantage. Um yeah, this this sounds exactly like uh, yeah, 24. <gasps> this sounds like everything you have ever heard. Um and and probably the reason those rolls were so low is you can't believe that you're actually seeing this. This sounds like every story that you've ever heard about the demon prince Demogorgon, who is one of the lords of the uh, one of the lords of the abyss. Um, basically, this is a creature that is supposed to rule. Um, kind of one of the one of the layers of the demonic side of um, the negative planes, um, and it is essentially a being that is on a par with the power of many deities, and it appears like it's coming towards the city, and it's not very happy. Fallager might be a little in front of you guys, and he just, he just like 
kind of slides slightly and stops. And he raises his shield in his right hand and his hammer in his left out kind of straight out. And he's, he just stops and does that right in front of you. What? And, what is it? What is that thing? Run, you fools. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, <clears throat> I can't believe what I'm fucking seeing. I can smell it. Fucking, oh. I don't never, I'm not normally terrified of anything, but, uh, because Helm protects me, but. That son of a bitch right there is Demogorgon. He's a prince of demons. And we need to get the hell out of here. As he says that, uh, Mulek pulls a uh, scroll of sending out of his uh, bag of holding and sends a message back to the king. Demogorgon is attacking your city. You must order all to flee or your city and everyone in it will die. And that's what and, I said. And, and okay, and you send that directly to the king. Yep. And the um, and the response you get back is, if I ever see that woman again, I'm going to personally destroy her. <laughs> <laughs> King's got the message. Let's get out of here. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yes, uh, Demogorgon is a gargantuan creature, um, and um, it uh, it oh starts. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say, I would also know this as a follower of Helm. I didn't know this, mm -hmm. but he's also referred to as the imprisoned one. Well, but apparently he's not imprisoned anymore. <laughs> no, clearly not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that is, uh, that is right. And with your, with your role... Um, you know that his uh, lair is a palace called Abyssum. Um, and the lair of the abyss he rules is called the Gaping Maw. Um, his lair is a place of madness and duality. Um, and then uh, the what you guys see as you all are there and watch, you see... Thimberchod fly out over the water. Oh no. And Thimberchod uh Thimberchod gets close enough to um Demogorgon that you can sort of see that he's getting ready to let loose a jet of fire. But then one of Demogorgon's heads just looks at the dragon. And just like very intently stares at the dragon. And then what happens is Thimberchod loops around Demogorgon and starts to fly back towards the city. And you can see there's sort of a madness in the uh, oh, dragon's no. eyes at that point. And, and double then, trouble, double trouble. <laughs> And then it just sort of it just sort of strafes along the docks here, just breathing a jet of flame on you know, buildings, on people, on uh, you know piles of cargo and everything like that. Oh, well, <laughs> so much for getting that gold for the egg. <clears throat> yeah, so. Um, Plus, no, his cavern's now undefended. Yeah, do we have time to <laughs> <laughs> escape via his, uh, his hold, his little treasure pot? <laughs> I'd say, I mean, if the destroyed. city's going down in play, flames anyway, you know, uh, may as well liberate. <laughs> even as a follower of Helm, I'm okay with this idea. 
at the same God. Now all y'all sound like me. Jeez. Anyway, as I was going to say, I no, mean, we're protecting the treasure. We've got to protect true. the treasure. True. Yeah. There you go. But at the same time, here's the thing, guys. Even if Thimbershot does go down, if we do find the egg, we still get paid. Um. There's no one to someone left to pay. Yeah, yeah. no one's going to be left oh, to pay it. Yeah, unless we kill this thing. What uh, the heck is this thing tech, attacking this city for, anyways? Kill this what? thing? Like Fal is your like, he he explains to you <laughs> like this. Wait, so if it was if it was imprisoned, can we imprison it again? Um, if I do, you think I could command? Oh, he might not. Does he understand common? I could probably command him to go home. <laughs> that would go get the prince. <laughs> I don't think that would work. Let me just let me just run Sleep. up and uh, I'm just gonna get close enough. Uh, his tentacles are only go like 100 home. feet long. I'll just try to get long enough and then uh, close enough and politely suggest that he return back to his palace. And you know, I love it. I'm, I'm even funnier if that worked. <laughs> Has anybody thought of calling our lynch buddy and tell him that all hell just broke loose? Yeah, that and also Zactimus, right? The one who actually summoned this thing. Do we want to go grab where did, her? Where are we, well, the where are we on the map right now? Can you like ping to us where we got to? Oh, what, what uh, I stopped? Yeah, I'm going to say that you guys, you right guys could have stopped. <laughs> no, no, you guys could have stopped like right here. Uh, okay. Just, just far enough that you have a clear line of sight out. Uh, you know, out to the water um, is, you know, you guys, you guys are close enough or, or yeah, close enough that you can see that. And of course everything is lit up. And every time this thing opens, it's opens its mouth. It's like glows with fire and the eyes are glowing with fire. Party at so the we just Dragon Hill place. <laughs> so, so I've heard one. I've heard one recommendation. Hey, let's run to the dragon's lair. See if we can fill our pockets. I've heard another general recommendation. Let's just get out of dodge. Um, I've heard another recommendation. Hey guys, it's a monster. Imagine all the XP we would get if we killed it. <laughs> yeah, that was Thaldor. Yeah, mm. I mean, there must uh, be a way to imprison it, right? Surely someone here uh, would know. Not in this I, group per se, but someone uh, in this town would know, right? I don't no. think we have time. We need to get out of that. We get. I'm a. My vote is to get out. We need to find out how to get out of here. Either the okay. way we came in or. Okay. Don't you think someone's has lived for millennia would know how to get rid of this thing? You know, we can make a, the you know, sending. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where would you like to go to make that sending? Would you like to do it from right here or would you like to get Hell somewhere? No. Fucking Let's right. run towards uh, Thimbershad's horde. So that way we know we'd be at least in a cavern. Well, there's okay. no way out. It's a one way in. That's true. Okay. How long do you think it takes like to make make the way out? <laughs> then we end up having to fight a red dragon. I say we I say we make our way towards the stone speaker. That'll work. Okay. Oh, so God. you start uh, making your way um, across here uh, towards the uh, stone speaker. You're you're not going to stop by the um, uh, hold of the deep king again. I'm taking it, which is fine. Um, if so they need then, us, they can magically contact us, can't they? The same way that, um, that yeah, people. I mean, yeah. you know, probably that abjure is able to, and I'm sure that some of the spellcasters on the um, on the king's payroll can do that. Actually, as you guys get about here, you um, so you're still. You know, hundreds of feet away from the entrance of Karenborn Cavern. But as you get there, you see a twin column of stone giants that appear to be carrying like old spears. And some of them have helmets on and some of them have like breastplate. 
uh, and stuff like that. And they are running. They are sprinting out of Cairngorm Cavern and turning and heading this way to go across the across one of these bridges, uh, presumably headed out towards the Dark Lake District. How many? And um, well, uh, you you see. Uh, at least, um, probably at least 80 of them going. And you think that one of them that is running along with them, you think is the stone speaker because there is a huge cave bear loping along with them. Should we help them boys or keep, <sighs> Uh, we can back them up. Yeah, I may say we maybe stay behind them and see what they're up to while they're doing that. Let me see if I can get a send a message to the lich and see if he's got any ideas. <laughs> As we turn around and go, okay, uh, well, we're going back up. Uh, yeah. So, so are you? Are you then? I heard follow. Are which way? Well, follow which, these guys? Yeah, which we, way did we come into here? I, I don't remember uh, which way did. Did we come in from like over here or did we okay. come in from this you guys, side? You guys were coming from the hold of the Deep King. Yeah. No, I mean yeah. I mean when we first came to Gracklestug. Oh, when you first came to Dra- Gracklestug? Yeah, you came that way. We uh, came you in, came, we came from there. the west, basically. <laughs> well, those giants are going towards the way that we came into this town. Unless you guys know of another exit, probably wouldn't be too bad to get towards where we know. I don't know. Have any other exit? Uh, there might be. You haven't talked to anybody, so you know. Um, and unless yeah. you want to just go wandering around and exploring, oh, while a demogorgon and a red dragon are destroying the city. Well, I say we <laughs> either back up all these giants and see if we can. T- Make a difference in the back, or out of character is what I'm saying, and then or <laughs> go well, loot the dragon horde, and get out of here. <laughs> I don't see why we can't do both. Can't spend <laughs> it if we're dead. Well, I mean, think about why we came down here. We came down here to find out what darkness. We've just definitely discovered that. Uh, is so is our primary objective to go find another exit and try and take some dragon gold, or go try to get out of this place and let the lich know, hey, we found some darkness. Yeah. Uh, the lich said there was only way out, and that's down. So I don't think we can go back the way we came. We'll end up at the uh, liches again. crap. So our choices are go deeper into the Underdark, where there are unknown horrors aplenty, and an area we don't really know. Help the city in some way defend itself against this ridiculous well, threat, or... Find a way to steal a bunch of shit and then leave. <laughs> but if we take, remember, if we take that gold, that dragon's going to know who oh, took yeah. it and where they are. So my advice is not to touch it. Unless the big thing kills him. They're buddy buddy right now. We'll kill them both. <laughs> no. Um, we no. need a really big rope. Thaldor, well, you no. know, you, you know, you always know the direction of north. Do you know how to, do you know the, way to go deeper in here can you tell i did study the map of this place so what would i know uh well um you would know that literally the deepest part of the of the city of gacklestrug is this uh trench um ladugar's furrow as it's referred to on the map um so you could maybe uh, climb down into that trench, and then you know all those tunnels, the Whirlstone tunnels, go from there. Uh, um, if you if you head over to this bridge, I'm going to give you this. Let's just say that you follow the you follow the stone giants as far as this bridge over here, and um, if you do you will see that there is in that trench, there is a gate over here. 
at the west end um and that is a that leads out and it kind of looks like it sort of leads down a little bit guys the best course of action if we follow the stone giants as far as we can we we'll hop down this bridge here when there's a gate that leads looks like it's down all right sounds good to me okay so you guys um to tell you what what you find with the stone giants they are going to go across the bridge um uh, and then they will work their way back to a gate and head out into the dark lake district and they clearly the ones that have spears and shields they are clearly going out there to battle um which one of the two creatures you they're battling you don't know but they're clearly either battling the dragon or the demon prince or both of them and um you can you can hear um presuming you don't follow them all the way out there but you can hear that uh, the battle is not going terribly well for the giants and then you get the um, impression that uh, from the number of dwarves that start to come streaming through the gates that they went through and the heavy thudding and pounding of oversized feet um perhaps the same thing that happened to the dragon has happened to some of the giants oh. um, and that they have been driven mad and Pan are starting to attack would Valager notice what's going on would he would he be able to identify this kind of like infectious madness oh uh yes you would um there is a there is a feature attributed to Demogorgon called the insanity gaze um, that uh, basically uh, Demogorgon can simply look at a creature and the um, and the creature doesn't even doesn't even get a saving throw because because it's basically like a god level, a god level insanity effect, and it basically just drives the creature insane for up to an hour, and it just completely goes crazy and attacks everything around it. Friend, foe, doesn't matter what. It just goes nuts and starts attacking, and that's uh, the. Um, you know a lot of uh a lot of the demons that uh that are under demogorgon's control have lesser versions of that kind of insanity effect you know they can cause confusion among people they can give people uh temporary insanity short term insanity effects those types of things Valazur just as we're running guys this i think he i think he just has a presence about him that makes makes everybody insane mad we should get the hell out of here you don't have to tell this, me twice this foe is, let's go is beyond us looks like we're getting stiffed again on pay boys but we might make it out of here with our lives and Cromie's going to look down to his hammer and be like, yeah, that's a bit too big. We got to do what we got to do. You know, our lives are worth more than, than gold. Yeah, we get in the habit of doing things and not getting paid. Mm. I mean, we might be able to get something out of Timber Child's cavern and then make a break for it, but it's really risky. I think the dragon would hunt us down. Yeah. It can smell the gold. I don't think that's worth the risk. Yeah, I'm not doing it. 
All right. I guess we we agree. We just we follow uh, Thaldor because he knows the best way out of here. This isn't our fight. Should we I'm try and maybe win. take some locals with us because they may know they're going to talk about better than we do? I have no idea about this place. I'm not worried much about the locals getting out of here with us as much as we might run into the the freaking um, drow. Yeah, right. Well, that's what uh, like Fellas was kind of explaining. It's like pretty, this whole city is just going to be enveloped in madness if we don't get the hell out of here. We could, it could happen to us too. <clears throat> All he's got to so, do is look at us. Yeah, well, let's go. This is this is twenty eight seconds, not twenty eight days. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, yeah, we're walking and talking. I was okay. ready for the exit. <laughs> All right, the so. Out. So you guys find when you get to this bridge and this chasm, the edges are sloped and they are rough stone. So you don't even need any. If you're careful, you can sort of just shim your way down the um, edges of that stone. Now, climbing up might be more difficult, but going down, you can get down it without having to use use any gear to get down to the bottom and you know as long as you're careful you won't fall and take any falling damage but um, just to give you sort of the full effect of of um, what there is out there um, this is sort of what you see in the um, in the lake that is what Demogorgon looks like Um, and he's got Got the spiked tail, got those tentacles uh, on the ends of his arms, got the two big hairy baboon heads. I've surely uh, seen some and, stranger things. Nah. <laughs> oh, Falco oh, has been geez. given advantage, by the way, by someone in the chat. Stranger things. Oh, uh, oh, Doors of Fear. Yeah, I'm sorry, Thaldor, you have you have advantage from packing peanuts. Oh, thank, thank you. you, peanut. Yeah. What uh, kind of flavored peanuts are they? <laughs> Styrofoam flavored. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, unsurprisingly, these gates are not being watched. And... Um, there is a postern door in the, you know, these are big, large gates, but there's a postern door that, that you can just open and go through. has like a simple bar over it. You can easily pick that bar up, toss it to the side or slide it to the side and then push that door open and go out. The only question would be, as some of you have mentioned, A, before you leave the city, do you want to let Renwick know or do you want to do that after you leave the city and then the second question is do you want to try to take anybody from the city with you so I want to send them before we go through the gate as long as it looks safe for us and I have time to do so I want to send uh, Renwick was the lich right yeah yeah I want to send him a message uh, okay before we leave okay and what are you going to tell him? Uh, basically, Renwick, we are at Gr- by Demogorgon, everyone going mad. We are leaving, going down. And then uh, the response you get back is, well, that explains it. Run, you fools. Run, run, run. (laughs) (laughs) Run, Forrest, run. I said run, guys. Let's get out of here. Don't look back. (laughs) Yes. And so you do run. Um... And so you ended run. the city of Gracklestone. <laughs> well, 
It's got to leave At some. Perhaps, it's got to leave some slaves. At least perhaps Gracklestag, as you as you knew it, mm. um, you run down this chasm and. Uh, now let's see. How many of you have dark vision, either naturally or by? I got the items? goggles of night. I've got okay. goggles of night. Okay. Crenraid uh, has the eyes. Um, what do you? What about you, Fallager? Do you have any kind of dark I'm, vision? Yeah, I have night dark vision. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Excellent. So you got eyes. All um, you guys all run. And um, you run, you run so far away, <laughs> and you uh, get to a, a large cavern. And as you run into this cavern, you realize that the cavern um, is sort of filled with this. A uh, cool mist, and um, the mist sort of rises around you. And as you, you know, you start, you start picking your way through, and you can see there's, um, you're kind of going into a forest of like uh, huge underdark fungi. And um, there's uh, there's for a long time it's quiet, but then sort of behind you, at first it seems like an echo of an echo, but then it gradually gets louder, and you can tell that you're not just thinking you're hearing it; you really are hearing it behind you. There is the sound of um, mad screams that seem to be like pursuing you. And the path that you're on appears to be going through this big forest of mushrooms with the mist around. Um, what do you guys want to do? Do you guys want to keep going? Do you want to? try to hide off to the side? Do you want to see where this leads? What do you want to do? Mm. Uh, well, so there's just a mist, like a low mist or like a foggy mist all around us, so we can't really see far. At, at, first, at first, it was like a low mist, but now that you've been going in this cavern, which which has seemed to extend for several miles now, uh, or at least for several minutes that you've been in it, it's now started to rise up. You can see 20, 30 feet off to either side of you, but um, the mist is, is heavy enough that you can't see any further than that. And you can sort of see these shapes because of your the dark vision that you guys all have see the shapes of these huge forests of mushrooms. And um, Mulek, you've identified some of the mushrooms. I think you actually found a book that had some information on some of the mushrooms of the Underdark at one point in time. And none of these look like anything that's poisonous. These look, these look a lot like, in fact, the... Um, those mushrooms that they use like to make furniture out of that they use to put to build that stage uh, there. So it's just like it's basically these are just like tree under the underdark version of trees. Um, and it's like all over the ground kind of uh, the mist has now gotten to where it's at least as high as your head, if not higher. Okay, I mean, but the mushrooms, like this, the, oh, the, the, the moss or the mushrooms are you know, on the ground. Oh, they're growing from the ground, but but these mushrooms are easily twenty feet tall. Oh, they're huge. Okay, yeah, yeah. With, um, we could hide. I can I can make two of us invisible. Make uh, oh, Fallager and Crinraid. Huh? Make them invisible. Who make them invisible? Fallager and Crinraid. 
make them invisible and I can hide. And then I would just be <laughs> out you in the can, open. You can hide with me. Just be quiet. Yeah. All right. I will. Uh, uh, and and are the, the, the madness that we hear is, is well, like is coming closer and closer, right? Is it like a uh, hundred, hundred yards, like half a mile? How loud is that? Well, with, with, with the way that, um, you know, the fact that you can't see anything, you don't, it's hard to tell exactly how far it is. And of course, because it's the underdark, everything is echoing off of the, you know, this is a cavern after all. So eventually there's echoes off of the ceiling and, and these stalactites and stalagmites and columns and stuff like that that are supporting the roof. So the the sound okay. is all kind of bouncing around, but generally the it's louder behind you than it is ahead of you, and it appears to be getting closer over time. All right, and the cavern is how how big? Like how much st- space between wall to wall? Uh, because of the fog, you can't oh, see. can't tell. Oh, dang it. And right. and even and even with your dark vision, it's even before the fog grew up, it was it was so vast that the ceiling is beyond the range of your dark vision and the the far walls are beyond the range of your dark vision. All right. So I am going so what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cast invisibility on okay. Falager and Crinraid. Uh, before okay. I do so, I'm telling them I'm going to make them invisible and st- and stay close to us. Okay. Yeah, Carmen won't know what this is. And so. and then while uh, I'm going to ask Thal uh, Thaldor uh, Thaldor find find us somewhere safe, and while he's trying to find us somewhere safe, I'm going to reach into my bag of holding and grab the stone speaker crystal, and I am going to. Uh, speak with plants. So I'm going to burn three charges of the crystal and try to make as much difficult terrain as I can behind us from where we, from where we are so that if anything comes close, they're going to hit some difficult terrain. Okay. Well, Mulek grabs this amethyst crystal rod and he um, starts to whisper into it. And as he does, the rest of you get this eerie sensation as some of these mushrooms, they kind of like bend down towards the edges of the path. And then you see like some, some uh, almost like veins of fungus that sort of grow out across the path behind you and they very quickly start to thicken and almost like there's tree roots growing up in the in the path that you have been along that you know in the fog and everything if people are trying to run it probably would trip them up Uh, and uh, that that extends behind you and quickly it disappears into the mist. You can't see how far it extends back. But Mulek, you get the you get the intent that the or you get the impression that the fungus here have heard you. They are following your instructions, and it's kind of weird because it it almost seems like they're they're happy that somebody has told them to do something. It's I bought kind of us a weird, weird feedback that you're getting. I bought us some time. The, the plants are going to help us Let's see if Thalder, see if you can find us somewhere safe. I can do that. Guys, just listen. Okay. You just want me to roll stealth for that? Uh, make me a stealth check. Yes. To find a place that everybody can hide. Uh, not my best 18, role, but okay. 18. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, the uh, final number is, um, you know, is sufficient. You wind up going off the path, and um, there's uh, 
how far oh, off the path do you go? Are you going so that you're um, so far away from the path that you can no longer see the path through the mist? Or do you want to say close enough to the path that you can see it uh, through the mist? Probably say we want to be able to see what's coming after us. Just We're far back enough to where it could, nothing could see us, but we could see it. Because two of us are invisible. So the other two can be back far enough to see what's going past us. Okay. All right. So um, you you get off of the path, and um, everybody make me a – now this is – now you're going to get advantage on this because you're being – directed what to do by a master thief. You also are, uh, at least two of you, have some invisibility. So everybody roll stealth with advantage. And the threshold that you need to clear is very low here because of your invisibility. And Goodness and gracious. <laughs> I find only... I only rolled a 12 because I have disadvantage. Okay. Well, but your invisibility... No, you're invisible. You'd have... Counters that. Counters that. So it's still... Oh, it's, 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 it's a flat roll, so it's yeah, still 12. Yeah, roll, yeah. All right. All right. Um, so 21, 21, 12. 12 is by far good enough. All right. So what you all notice, those of you who are close enough to the path to see it, I'm going to say the two people that are invisible stay close enough to the path to see what's going by the other two back a little bit further away and get hidden behind um, behind mushroom stalks. You see insubstantial shadows go by that and the 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 madness, the noise, the madness seems to be coming from these insubstantial shadows. And there are many that go by, and some of them seem to be kind of the size of dwarves, and some of them seem to be kind of the size of humans, and some of them seem to have strange animal shapes, um, like it looks like you you could swear that you see shadows in the form of horses and then sometimes you see shadows in the form of other creatures uh, you think maybe there there's some elk and some wolves that go by and this procession just seems to keep going for far longer than you think that it should. And as these people and these creatures go by, you can see that their heads sort of swing side to side. And whenever, they're, whenever their face is turned towards you, it doesn't matter whether it's a humanoid shape or a creature shape, the eyes just seem to be glowing with some sort of amber, um, amber light. Um, they seem to be unaware of you. They, they don't. None of them seem to actually see you. Uh, but this keeps going, and um, I need to have everybody make a wisdom save, please. Mm. I'm going to use my advantage on that one. Okay. Well, 20. Let's see if I get a nat 20. Hold on. No, no nat 20. Uh, I don't know if a 13 is going to be good enough, so I'm going to have to... I'm going to use my inspiration on myself. Okay. 22. All right. Yeah. Um... 
I won't because I want to see what happens when I fail. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, um, Krenraid and Mulek, you both. Uh, okay, yeah, that's just poison, uh, not fear. Uh, you both just get. And you both get filled with a sense of dread that just sort of freezes you in place. You, um, you are, it's that kind of, it's that kind of terror that you feel like you want to run, but you can't because your, your mind can't tell your muscles to move. It, you just feel uh, completely paralyzed with fear, and you don't make any noise. But you're just you just sort of you're just sort of there. Your heart is just racing so fast it feels like it's going to leap out of your chest. And this is a this is a feeling that is very alien, very unfamiliar to both of you because neither one of you really get terrified. I mean. For for a dwarven barbarian of the Hillcrest clan, terror is just like anathema. It's it's something that you've never experienced before. Um, Thaldor and Falager, you feel that fear rising in you, but you realize it's just irrational and you shake it off. But you look at your two companions and you can tell that they are just gripped with this. They're just their eyes are wide and they're just sort of staring towards the road like they expect their imminent death to be coming for them at any at any second um you know it's just like it's like they are people who have seen their own doom and are powerless to do anything about it and that's sort of the look that you read in their faces well no one will see crenrate if it's been less than an hour Mm -hmm. okay all right falager Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but I can see on Mulek's face that he's yeah. You like can he's see that on piss himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, it looks like he's just he's just got that sort of rictus. He's he's he looks like he's just frozen in place, um, and <laughs> completely rigid. Yeah. Right. Hey, even 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 your breathing even your breathing is not. You know, that is like it's like he's doing everything he can to remain very quiet and very still. I um, go up behind him and put my I put my put my, my hand over his mouth and I I whisper in his ears like what I know what what what's going on? Calm, breathe, breathe, slow, slow, slow. Yeah, okay. Slow down. Yeah, I know. And I'm just shaking, sweating. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can hear, you can hear Thaldor reassuring you, and you want to believe him, but clearly he doesn't realize how dangerous the situation is, and you wish you could communicate to him just how, just how dire it is, but your mouth won't even work to talk to him, hmm. and it's it's that's how frightened you are. Um, in this moment, is there a big rock nearby, or on the floor? <laughs> um, there, there are some uh, stalagmites. Uh, so you know, like those big spires growing up, uh, the mineral deposits growing up mm-hmm. from the floor of the cave. There are some of those around, but there's so, no like loose boulders or anything. Krenray's going to deal with this problem the only way he really knows how, which is by hitting his head quite literally against a wall. So he's going to try Mm. and dismiss these feelings in probably the worst way possible. Will that take him out of? Will that take him out of invisibility? He's not unless he's attacking it. Actually, actually, Krenray, you wish you could, but when you hit my head again, when you when you when you think about doing that you find you can't even move enough to to 
even kind of lean your head against the rock. It's just you're oh you're just this is paralyzed with fear. Yeah, this is just Can I can I roll to see if I like I know they saw them go by and and but them two frozen like that. Can I let me whisper out to uh Fallager. Fallager. What what the fuck is going on? Why is Mulek freaking the hell out? Am I? I don't know how close I am to. Uh, you're, you're close enough. You're close enough to whisper to him. Uh, I picture all four of you are very close together, uh, especially since two of you are invisible. You you kind of wanna, um, you wanna be uh, not too terribly far away. The the uh, in, okay. invisible ones are probably just on the edge of vision. The other two are a little further back. I whisper back and I say. I told you, this is the power of the demon prince. So wait a minute, they're not going to go insane, are they? I, I don't know. I'll have to examine them when I'm done. Has the procession gone past us yet? Or are they still walking? They're still going by. And they're, they appear to be, they appear to be running. And the um, and what's weird about their cries is you can their cries are audible, but even though they are this close, the cries sound like they're coming from miles away. It's it's just a really weird thing that this this noise kept coming closer to you and closer to you and closer to you until it gets right to you. And now it sounds like it's miles away. So that there's, there's clearly some really weird, strange effects going on here. Um, and I need all four of you to make constitution saves, please. Ooh. Damn. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You feel the wisdom, but the con. Yeah, you got that. Okay. okay. All right. Well, um, I like to uh, check his, uh, kept his mouth shut the entire time. He hasn't even breathed. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. so frightened and he just doesn't feel anything else. <laughs> Kren Raid, after a time, you realize that the invisibility wears off. Uh, Faldor, after a time, the, this procession is going by and it's going by and you you just can't believe how how heavy your eyes are growing and you eventually close them. Mulek. Oh, oh goodness. Your, your fear is so great that you, um, just sort of eventually you kind of pass out. And even though you're paralyzed, you sort of pass out in your, in your paralysis and you don't know how much time it passed time passes um Krenraid and Falajur you feel very sleepy but you you force yourselves to stay awake and you keep seeing this procession going by and then Falajur or eventually you realize you're no longer invisible either um but again these things don't seem to see you and you can hear the steady rhythmic breathing of both uh, Faldor and Mulek. Uh, James, okay. are you going to say something? Yeah, I forgot. I've got a tiger and a giant weasel with me. They, okay. Um, Not anymore. When when you guys uh, went to hide, they went to hide with you. Mm -hmm. When this procession of creatures and people started to go by, mm -hmm. um, you guys noticed that 
both the weasel and the tiger, they moved farther away from the path, going deeper into the forest of mushrooms behind you, and mm. you haven't seen them since. So I, they, they, they've moved further away from the road, basically. I, um, I whispered to uh, Crane Raid, I say, uh, you grab Mulek and I'll grab Thalador. We got to get further off this path. Can, can I, I respond or am I still frightened? Um, yeah, you, you try to, you try to get, um, you try to get Krenray to respond and you realize he, he isn't. And you look at him and you see he is frozen. You know, now that he's visible, he's frozen with fear in the same way that, um, that, uh, Mulek has been. I, I pick up Crane Raid and I slowly start dragging him until I get him out of range of do, uh, with this do fear I, effect. Is uh, well, is Falisher visible now too, or do I need to roll a separate Constitution save to hold invisibility? You're asleep. No, 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 yeah, no. This, this is you know, the reason it wore off is because at least an hour passed. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, so everyone's visible now. Okay. Yeah, everyone's visible now. That, right. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't make that clear. Um, but yeah, it, it's been more than an hour. So, okay. Do I need and to? You're in, you're in no condition to cast a spell at this point. No, I wasn't saying I was casting. If I was was right, 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 right. Yeah. You were you were trying I automatically to keep lost. It. Okay. Uh, well, the, the no, time. I actually gave you. Yeah, it just it just elapsed. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Ken, what you it, were going to say something. Yeah, I mean, do I need to make a strength athletics or anything like that to just? Uh, what is your uh, what is your actual strength and? Krenraid, if yep. okay, Krenraid, if you have, if you have exactly. figured it out somewhere, what is the total weight of you and all your gear? Yeah, he can carry me. Okay, all right. So yeah, you can you can pull him, um, drag him, or you can actually probably pick him up with a fifteen and carry him a little bit. You you do, and you set him down next to a mushroom stalk only you realize that as you set him down next to a mushroom stalk it's still night but or it's still dark but this is not the stalk of a mushroom this is the bark of a tree and you look down at the ground, and um, there's not the stone of the Underdark, but there's some kind of soil. And you take a, you take a whiff, and you, you can smell, you can smell fresh air. It's fresh air that has the faint scent of death on it. The faint odor of death and decay is on it. And you, you know, you haven't taken him far. You may be taking him 20 or 30 feet. You look back and you see, you see your friends still sitting over there. So you can still go and grab, um, Thalador and grab uh, Mulek and okay. drag them over here. Um, and then you realize that kind of off in what must be the east, you realize that through the mist and through the fog, you're starting to see sort of a, a, a gradual um graying as though um, you're coming towards some sort of dawn. And the mist is all around you. And the only thing that's clear to you is that somehow you're not in the Underdark anymore. Hmm. 
And that's where we're going to take our break. <laughs> yeah, right. I felt like so, it was coming. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and take our break. Uh, chat, I'm going to put the break on for 15 minutes instead of 10 minutes because uh, the players are actually going to get an invitation and they're going to switch to a new Roll20 game Ooh. between now and the time that we come back from break Hello. because... We have finished our, uh, you know, our sojourn through the storyline of the uh, uh, Out of the Abyss, at least for now. And we're about ready to go and look at another storyline. So uh, I am going to go ahead and um, close or exit this game. I'm going to go to the other game and send invitations. Uh, I'm just going to put this invite into the main Discord channel for you guys. And you all can accept it and then go ahead and um, you can begin to log into that game. Um, and hey, D DM, will our current status, like spells used and everything, are you going to be able to copy that directly over into the new game? I am going to be able to copy that over to the new game. And thank you for reminding me. I'm, I thought I had done that already, but let me just double well, check. Well, I just, I've, I've I used. I've used some stuff in this game. So if you copied it from before this game, it won't be updated. Oh, okay. So yes, in that case, it's probably in that case, it's probably not going to. Um, All right. I'll just take pictures and update really quick. If, if it's not, uh, when I get into the new game, I'll make the adjustments. Okay. Uh, and then bef I am going to go over here and bring the music up for the chat and let oh my them God, I'm excited. To me yeah, me too. I'm looking at the screen I right am now. too. I'm excited. No! Oh, <laughs> yes. God, I hate this fucking... I've never played I've it. I've never but I just... played it. I'm excited. Oh. I I've played it a few times, but I'm really hyped. <laughs> BM, question. Is this the newest updated version of this? This is the Super newest fun. updated version. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm going to have fun with this. I haven't this. played this one. Yuck. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then let me take a quick peek. FYI, zero spoilers from me. I'm going to watch you guys experience this. <laughs> well, I think we'll be through it so fast. We won't really experience anything. <laughs> well, I mean, because this was pretty long. <laughs> we didn't even have time to do this one mission. Oh, God. We didn't get paid. What a disaster. <laughs> but we didn't die, right? And that's the important Yet. part. Keyword. Yet. 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 We are doing Curse of Strat. So I, I, do, I do know a little bit of Curse of Strat. I've never played it, but I know a little bit of it. Are we oh, on break? It's, it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're on break. So, uh, so I'm uh, assuming we leveled up then, right? Uh, actually, that's a good point. Yes, you did. So you oh, did. I'm going to need time. <laughs> Well, you better, better get on it. Oh. Okay. Well, we'll we'll spend the first we'll spend the first bit making sure that everybody is leveled up when we get back from break. Um, I'm in the game right now, and there's no I have there's no nothing in my journal. So. Okay. So then, then this yep. is what I need to do. I need to. Oh, I need to go out of this. Uh, all right. So let me go to. This. I'll be I'll be right back, guys. Yeah. So I'm going Ooh, to. I got a digital. I got magical secrets, boys. Okay. <laughs> what do I do? Ooh, Ooh beginning at seventh level, I can dodge out the way of certain areas and effects, such as an ancient red dragon's fiery breath or an ice you'll, you'll, spell. You'll I get evasion. A lot of things in curse. Yeah, I got evasion now. So and it, uh, you make a dexterity saving throw to take only half damage. Wish you I could ask James. take no damage if you succeed on the saving throw. Wish I could ask Thanks. James what, what spells to go in and get out of which class, but he's got his own things he's going to worry about. I mean, you're the cleric <laughs> right now. I mean, you, I'm, no, I'm really not abilities. a cleric, but you've got some abilities. I'm a bard. Uh, 
Uh, FYI, bar, the cleric. A barbarian's going to be a very limited use in Curse of Strength. <laughs> <laughs> Don't expect any, uh, any great Why? I'm not going to say why. <laughs> I just know part of it because I've been listening to, uh, or I've got that book. Uh, it's the Choose Your I Own begged Adventure. you. I begged you. Galivana said, please don't make us play Curse of Strahd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not complaining. So funny. Oh. Neither am I. It's going to be great. I'm high. <laughs> so isn't, this, isn't this whole adventure just like designed to cuck you? Like Yes. <laughs> Depends on how smart you are. For that exact reason, it literally plays to your intelligence, and you've got to be smart about how you do anything. <laughs> it's thank God you have fuck. a. Thank God well, you have a We're not going to be in it that it. long. <laughs> yeah, but I thought we'd be. I thought mastermind, I have eight intelligence, so I'm not going to be doing it. <laughs> I thought we'd be longer in the Underdark, but wow, I can't believe you switched us out that fast. Well, I wonder how we ended up in in. Well, where is that at? What's the name of the country? Strahd? I don't remember. No, Strahd is the is the vampire. I'm trying to think what the uh where the land is. Um uh, yeah. right, right. It's uh Didn't y'all go yeah. to it in your planeswalkers? I went to it in y'all's planeswalkers. No, that's campaign. that inner Strahd is not the same as as the Strahd. In a demi plane of dread. That's where we are. Ravenloft, as it's called. Ravenloft, yeah, that is Ravenloft, because the castle is called Ravenloft. It's a prison for Strahd. That's not a spoiler; yeah. though, that's common knowledge. For yeah. Dark Avenger. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay saying that, but I'm not saying it anymore. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I've listened, like I said, Paul. I've got the uh, adventure thing, the choose your own adventure book about escape from oh. castle Ravenloft. So yeah, I know yeah. a little bit. I don't know everything. There's, there's a difference. Hyped. Oh, I'm hyped because I've never played Curse of Strahd. And, you know, now they got that one you can get at the bookstore. It's like $100 with all the new updated maps and everything else. Have you seen that? I have not. It looks I like a coffin. I either. It looks nuts. There's so many updates in this one, by the way, in 2.5. It's, it's, I won't know what to His, either. This edition is the digital edition of the new one you can, like I said, buy at the bookstore. It looks like it comes oh. in a coffin. Yeah. I saw it the other day when we was at uh, Books a Million. They had it, but it was like hundred and thirty dollars there. But you can get it. Yeah, it's it's got everything. It's got the whole like player's manual just for Curse of Strahd. All the maps, all the it's insane. Look it up on Amazon. You'll be able to see it. Just type in Curse of Strahd and look at the new because they I'm just updated it. Yeah, yeah. Resting in coffin is a premium edition of award-winning Dungeons & Dragons. Just yes. Caustic Brew? What the hell is that? Comes with a DM screen. Oh my god. This is a really cool book. Like this whole, yeah. this, this is like yeah. premium, I get that. Yeah. It's expensive as fuck though. Oh yeah. Part of my French. <clears throat> well. Oh, that's cool. Tasha's Caustic Brew is basically like a light, a low. Tasha's low, stuff is nuts. Tasha's Caustic Brew, it's like I've 30 feet, it. a 30 feet long, five foot wide acid stream. So it's like a little mini lightning bolt, but it's an acid. It's kind of cool. Right. There's a, there's a spell oh. in Tasha's that takes away the reaction, the action, or the bonus action from a creature, and you can do it every turn. That's <laughs> insane. So, so they can only choose one of those three things. They can either move, they can use a reaction, they can use an action or a bonus action. They can only do one of them. <laughs> God, I'm so tempted to get Aura of Vitality. The Curse of Strad stuff, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Tasha's Cauldron stuff is fucking nuts. Wait till I hit level 18 with this, the way I picked this rogue. At level 18, I'm so evasive that no, no. Uh, What's your subclass? Uh, mastermind. Oh. Uh, that no, uh, no target can have advantage against me if I'm long as I'm not incapacitated. Why did you pick mastermind? It's like, that's like homebrew stuff, isn't it? No, it comes out of. Uh, 
it's roguish. My roguish archetype was it, no. I know what um, it is, but I figured I thought you only play that in like political intrigue campaigns and stuff like that. No, you can play it with anything, you know, because I mean it makes sense with my keen mind, uh, master of intrigue. I get that's where I learned under common and draconic. Thief uh, is master my favorite. Active. Oh yeah, um, I can do the bonus action to help, so you get you know advantage on your attack. Um, uncanny dodge comes from basic thing expertise I got to choose perception and dis- deception mm-hmm. evasion but what I got this level was really good evasion if I, if I make a dexterity saving throw from a it, it says I can dodge out of the way of area effects so if like say a dragon was hitting us with fire or something want to hit us with ice or you know like ray of frost or something or cone of cold or whatever if I make a dexterity saving throw, um, I'll take no damage instead of half damage. But if I fail, I'll automatically take half damage. It's one of the most useful things out of the rogues toolkit. A lot of people yes, want to take seven and stop that. Because mm-hmm. just because it's that useful. What the hell is what level's aura of vitality? I thought that was a uh, third level. Yeah, it's a good thing you are mastermind. It's a good thing you've got evasion because we're going to need both. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Concentration up to one minute. Healing energy radiates from you within a 30-foot radius. Until the spell ends, the aura moves with you. You can use a bonus action to cause one creature in the area, in the aura, including you, to regain 2d6 hit points for up to for a full minute. So, like, 2d6 hit points every six seconds? What is that? That's... Wow. Here's here's the best that's, thing. That's ten two d six of healing. Crazy. Jesus. Uh, I, I think it's a, a, a second. A ten seconds is around, right? I think. Seconds. Six, six seconds. Six, six seconds, seconds, seconds is around. So I concentrate up to a minute. So you can pop this every second. So yeah, that's that's ten two d six of healing. But I don't know if I want it. Well, have a look at back of the mind. Yeah, I, I've looked at them. I just don't know. I don't, I'm guessing his spell list is, has everything available. I don't know. It should. If he has Tasha's and everything. Should, I've got the physical copy of Tasha's uh, Cauldron of Everything. Flock of Familiars. Galder's Tower. What? Hey, uh, Ken, did you have a Roll20 character sheet? What? Do you have a Roll20 character sheet? It's on, it was in the last campaign. Or the last session, or whatever. But I should have had one for the last one. Okay. Maybe I didn't. Maybe uh, I didn't, actually. No, I don't, I don't know. I thought I did, but no, I guess not. No, I don't. Just D&D Beyond. Okay, so then I think what I have to do is I have to go. Um, yeah, I remember it. now. Don't. Okay, because uh, I'll be rolling or taking the effort to help. Average. Average. So it's uh, yeah, average plus your um, plus your con bonus. Well, I guess it's average, and then your con bonus is automatically added to it. Yeah, you don't have to calculate it. Um, well, son of a biscuit. Uh. I, oh, that's what I need to do. Okay. That's what I need to do. I need to add... I need to add a... I'm back. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, 
What I have to do so that you have a token that you can control, Ken, yeah. is I have to create a um, I have to create a basically a blank character sheet, call it Falager, and then link your token to that. Okay. So that it um, so that it will uh, do that. And I think um, to go to this, I need to do PCs. Uh, and then I'm going to take that and drop it here. And that will give you an actual... Okay, there we go. That'll give you an actual image for your... Okay, that is a good so, question, Ken. I don't know what to do on that. Oh, shoot. What level can you set them up? Hey, DM, you didn't move my latest character over, right? Because um, this doesn't have the updates I've made since like a week or two weeks ago. Oh, it doesn't? Well, I'm trying to... See, it might not be that many. Like, I added the the chart, the uh, Graven Hollow Crystal to little tracker thing and that's not there so I'll have to it's, it, don't worry about it I'll, I'll, I had to do it last time too I had to cre- recreate some things but I'll just I'll just redo it okay all right stone speaker crystal you had to I, I had to you, you know where I have uh, on the on the first page where you can put where I have like arcane recovery pearl power had a wizardry horn of silent alarm yeah, 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 yeah. So the little trackers. So I, I, I add things so I know how many I've used and how many I have. Oh, okay. And so I had one for Graven Hollow, Graven Hollow Crystal that's not on this new one. So I'll just, I just have to recreate it. Okay. It's, and then right. let's see. Okay, so that's there. Okay, I am going to give us five for a minute, five more minutes so that I can go grab uh, grab something uh, I don't understand why so I get magical secrets at sixth level and it says you learn two spells of your choice from any class it spell has to be must be a of a level you can cast and I can cast Oh, I guess I can only cast. Can I only still only cast third level spells? You're a what class are you? Class I'm multi. I'm a multi class spellcaster, so I have to follow the multi class spellcaster rules. But it should just be like one level underneath what I normally could cast. What classes are they? Are they bards and wizards? <laughs> could be any. It could be any class. Well, they have can, different. Um, they have different. Oh, um, d- doesn't matter. Uh, quarter casters, half casters, and full casters. So uh, your uh, spell level will be different. I well, before we just leveled up, my highest level I could cast was third level. Right. So so it would be it'd probably be fourth level, but I'm. I don't want to get my book. It depends but, which class you pick when you level up. It would probably it would be fourth, yeah, the very most. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm a level behind because I took a first level in cleric. So, level seven, right? It just means like a level behind in terms of. I yeah, I'm still a level behind. So I'm I have to follow the multi-class spellcaster rule. Yeah, so do I. I have to do the same thing. So if I wasn't a fucking level one cleric, I could take a f- one spell in fourth level, but I can't. I, I have right. to wait till level eight to do that. But so, uh, yeah, all I can pick is third level spells. I could get that aura of vitality. That's pretty sexy. Or I could get fireball. It wouldn't hurt to have two fireball users. Well, I don't have fireball yet, and I'm oh. probably not going to take it this time. So if you grab it, that might be a good thing. I, I just don't know. I was, whip, I was uh, James. What's I that? Like it. Look at Tasha's mind whip for LinkedIn Discord. I think you'll like it. 
Oh, there's too many other good ones. I I'm trying to find things that are more like useful. Something that's not outside of your wheelhouse, James. Yeah, if it's yeah, like, like wind wall could be. I don't know. Wind wall's not that great. I guess. I, I wish I wish Galavan would tell us. Hey, you may be. Uh, leveling up then we could have discussion during the week like okay which spells are you thinking about taking which spells are you thinking about because now we're like under the gun and i'm like crap well we can go back and change them and whenever if we change our mind it's not that big of a deal yeah we're probably not going to be casting too much tonight who knows with about an hour left in our game i think most of this would be story getting set up count a spell i have counter i have i have counter spell what do you think? Lightning bolt and, and fireball, maybe? Oh, not lightning bolt. That's too... I took that for one game, and I hardly ever used it. It was just so hard. It's so hard to line up. Lehman's tiny hut. No one has it. Yeah, that that's one I may take, because that's such a power, powerful one. In fact, with, with my Chronergy wizard, I could technically get to the point where I could cast Lehman's tiny hut in one action. Wow, that's good. It could be cast during a battle, and we would we could all just escape into the battle or into the, the that's, hut. That's slick. It's almost game, it it's, it's almost game breaking. Eight hours. It is actually game breaking. Oh, yeah. you can go there and take a long <laughs> rest. Come out and be like, ah, screw you. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you can put barrels or explosives and other things outside the hut, and, and yeah. then just come back. In How about or haste? Pop out and come back in. Yeah, haste. Haste, haste, haste is a good one too. So if you take haste, I probably won't take haste. If if you can take spells that are concentration. That'll help because I'm trying. Uh, if it's hard for me to take concentration spells because if I'm concentrating on one thing, I can't we, concentrating on another. We need fireball though. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, I not necessarily. How, yeah. how are you not going to take? What are you taking? That's a damage spell. Uh, well, I'm, I'm taking controlling spells. So I'm. Well, I'm that's what I'm, I was trying to do. I'm a controller. Oh, a controller. Yeah. <sighs> like that's like like I try, I'm trying to divide and conquer because because my my uh, my um, uh, what, what's the word uh, in, um, uh, initiative my initiative is so high that I will be one of the first ones to go almost any time and so I'm trying to like separate the enemies or freeze half of the enemy do things so that it, like just our last battle I took two out of the battle right off the bat and so it made it easier so that, that's kind of the thinking that Mulek is doing is trying to control battlefield control so if you want to take fireball then I could you know try to control and then you just come in and blast or or whatever I don't know I don't envy you you got a lot of choices yeah I, I shoot I wasn't ready if, if you're not taking counterspell I should take it no I have already have counterspell okay I think I was gonna take uh Tiny hut. Nice. Um, I like I like aura vitality. That's pretty good. It's really good with life cleric, but I'm not a life cleric. Another good one is water breathing. Yikes. I could I could cast water breathing first thing in the morning as a ritual, and then everyone would be able to breathe in water if we were ever in a water situation. <laughs> Insight greed. Fly <laughs> is very good. Yeah, fly, but that's again a concentration spell. It is. Uh, dispel magic. Very, very useful. It's uh, very important to have someone or something that can cast dispel magic. Hey, uh, Ken, can you do me a favor? Um, can you? There's something weird going on with this character sheet I've created for you. Um, can you go into your journal and see if you see a. Uh, an item for Falager in your journal. Yeah. You do? I see, a, I see a Falager sheet right here. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, when you pull it, when you pull it out, can you pull it out um, a token onto the... Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, then, then all that's going weird is that on the DM screen, it's supposed to give you a little dot on the side to show you that it's assigned to somebody and for whatever reason yours is the only one that's not giving me a dot so i keep thinking well 
in the mechanics, it shows me it's assigned to him, but it's not telling me it's assigned to him. So I, I was worried that I was worried that you weren't going to be able to see it. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead, turn the music back down. Uh, we are back. Uh, ladles and jelly spoons. We are back from our uh, uh, from our extended break. Uh, what I would like to do is I would like to move us over to um, a map uh, to show where we are um, and uh, kind oh, of boy <laughs> and kind of uh, back up a little bit here and I give you. Uh, a bit of an idea that you guys uh, find yourselves in a um, in a woodland, and this woodland that you are in is near a lake. Um, the there is a as the sun rises there is a light mist that is around and it's um uh, the sky is overcast so it's a gray day but uh after after the time you guys have spent in the underdark uh, and even before that, the time that you were down in that underground temple and then in the uh, hall with Renwick uh, in that keep where there was no light or anything, it was – it's just uh, – it just seems too bright to be believed. But you realize it's a very gray and overcast day, and there's a chill wind that um, or a chill breeze it's, it doesn't really count as a wind that is blowing off of off of the lake there and um, the uh, as you look out uh, over the water you see not far uh off the shore maybe maybe 50 feet um uh, off the shore there is a rowboat and in the rowboat there sits a man and the man is sitting there almost like he's asleep but then he sort of pushes himself back and he um, he raises a bottle to his lips, and he tips the bottle back, and he drains it, and then he just sort of drops the bottle in the um, bottom of the little rowboat that he is in, and. Then he leans forward and he picks up a burlap sack. And the burlap sack is its about the size of a sack of flour. Um, and uh, he uh, rests it on the edge of the boat. And as he rests it on the edge of the boat, you suddenly see the burlap sack squirm. And you hear a uh, you hear a muffled cry. Stop! Stop! Please! Stop! And it sounds a little bit like the call of a child. And the guy looks for all the world like he's about ready to push this sack off of the boat and into the water. 
what would you all like to do? Uh, find the nearest tree and hit my head against it really hard. <laughs> okay, there I'm is one. Any of this is real. <laughs> there is there is one right next to you. You can Perfect. you can go ahead and uh, smack your head against the tree. One d four, one d six. I'll let you decide. Where are we at? On uh, the map? Oh, good, good question. You guys are right about here, right at the edge of the woods. Uh, um, as you look out across the the sandy beach towards the lake, uh, you can see that there's sand and pebbles and everything making up the beach. And then you can see over here there are several more rowboats. Mm. Do we it want the stream to see the map as well? Because currently they see the break screen. Oh, Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, carry on. Thank you. Question. Nope. Um, also, one more question. Uh, is Mulek and Thaldor still asleep? No. Yeah, uh, You guys are all awake, and none of you are under the um, effects of the fear anymore. I look up. Thaldor's looking around like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. This isn't, this isn't the Underdark anymore. Where are we at, and how did we get here? I look over at uh, Fallager and say that where how did we get here? All I remember is falling asleep. I had to pull each of you further away, and uh, I don't understand it. But uh, when I pulled you to right here, we uh, we seem to have been transported or something it's quite weird I, I don't know maybe there was something magical about that mist i i i don't know my head is fuzzy what i ah mm. uh, uh, i oh i just hit my head against that tree and i i was still here what the hell well i the last I barely time I got knew, out there wasn't trees in the underdark that's what i just told you i you know we're not in the Underdark anymore, I don't believe. You guys were so paralyzed with fear, I, like I said, I had to drag y'all. Wait, you dragged me leagues the surface? Wow, you must really work out. Uh, no, <laughs> Kunrad, I don't I don't I don't understand what's going on here. All right. I just know you that would. we're not where we were. You're so. you're you're yes. a magical guy. What what the hell's going on here? I don't know how he got here. I don't, I'm I'm still confused. I just barely got off over being scared to death. That's uh, no, I, I had a feeling. Right. That was terrifying. I don't know what the hell that was, but it was terrifying. I was, I was frozen. I've never been more scared. Frozen with fear. Me and Fowler had an idea that that was probably what was going on with y'all. It was it was awful, honestly. It was I, I, it was more scary than when my mum beat my ass when I stole some bread. <laughs> and uh, Faldor, as uh, Krenry tells you that, and as you chuckle, you hear a splash. And you see that the person in the rowboat has pushed the burlap sack off of the edge of the rowboat. And um, it's sort of uh, beginning to thrash around in the water a bit, um, but it's gradually beginning to look like it's going to sink. And as, uh, as he does, the fisherman, or as that does happen, the fisherman just sort of reaches down and picks up a fishing rod. And then he takes the fishing rod and he casts it out into the lake. How far away is this happening? Uh, it's about 50 feet offshore. Hey! What the hell are you doing? He doesn't seem to respond to you like i said there's three more rowboats over here 
Do I think I could swim in it? In the water? It looks like a lake. Um, the question would be, what are you wearing? Like, I, you're, you're a rogue, so you're probably not wearing any metal armor. No, I wear leather um, armor. Okay. Um, you would have your normal swim speed. If you have anything that might weigh you down or anything that you might not want to get wet, you might want to leave it with the guys before you jump in. But um, there is a... Uh, we are going to say that there is a... Uh, countdown happening now um and we are we are right now at uh let's say i want to get this to 40 i wanna yeah I guess as he's doing that my plan is i'll take anything off that would weigh me down i don't want to get wet around my waist i dive in the water and i'm going to try to drag the burlap sack towards the shore okay all right. What is your um, what is your normal speed? Your normal speed is thirty. Yeah, thirty. Okay, so you would have a swimming speed that is half of that. So you have a swimming speed of twenty. Um, so it's going to be fifty uh, fifty feet to get out to the. Two movements and a double uh, dash. Or I can do two movements and bonus action dash. Okay. I, yeah, I can I can move, then bonus action dash. So Okay. So can I head for the uh, what, 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 head what is the what is the total movement on on over the ground that that would be? Over that the ground if I took my full 60, thirty that would be 60. ninety. Ninety. Cause Two movements is 60, and then a dash is another 30, right? I think so I can the total... only move 30 feet. 30 feet is all I can move. But 30 if I feet. A bonus, right, then a bonus action. With my action, I can move, so that's 60. And then a bonus and action with 90. bonus action, yes. So you can swim 45 feet. At the end of the first round, you are five feet away from the burlap bag. And the... Um, um, the bag is almost entirely submerged at that point, but it, you can see it. You can see uh, like a corner of it floating on the uh, on the surface of the water. Okay, so Thaldor is swimming. Mulek and Falager and Krenraid, what are you guys doing? Jumping on a rowboat and going after him. Rado. I'll help. Uh, Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to say that you guys basically will have um, your swimming speed, uh, being able to row the rowboat. Uh, uh, so you guys can get 40 feet out there, which is you can almost catch up to uh, almost catch up to Thaldor, but he's a little bit ahead of you. Mulek, um, it's obviously dawn, so uh, the animals would have gone back to wherever they go back to. What do you want to do? All right, so sorry, I'm, I've been dealing with my character. Uh, so where am I in relation to the water? You guys are right here on the edge of the woods. And uh, we see a guy in a boat that just ca threw something in the water? Threw a burlap sack that was uh, squirming, and you heard a high-pitched voice saying help from inside the bag. And what do I see the guy in the boat doing? He has pulled out a fishing rod and has cast a line. He's using the pierce tape. Uh, so the guy threw something in the... He, so that guy just threw someone in the water, and now he... Just out of it. Yep. All right. I am going to. Um, uh, I'm just going to cast a hypnotic pattern at that guy. Okay. Hypnotic pattern. All right. You cast hypnotic pattern, 
And um, what is the uh, what? Uh, let me see. I know what he is, but I need to figure out. Uh, that's a wisdom save, right? Uh, yes, wisdom save. DC and sixteen. DC sixteen. So he gets a flat roll on that. He fails. Um, he just sort of, he just sort of looks blankly. He's holding his fishing rod, and he just sort of keeps looking in that direction. But he, you know, he's not trying to reel in his rod or or manipulate his rod. He's just holding it there, and just sort of drifting in the boat. Yeah, and I'm just going to keep my eye on him. Okay, sure. All right, so. That's the end of round one. Round two. Um, uh, Thaldor, you have reached the bag. And when you reach the bag and you turn around, you see that Krenraid and Falager are in a rowboat rapidly closing. Um, what would you like to do? I grab the bag and I start swimming towards the rowboat to throw the bag into their rowboat. Okay. All right. Um, Krenraid Falager, uh, you see that he is bringing this bag towards the boat. You're going to help him get into the boat, get get the bag into the boat, or yep. or what was your plan to do? Okay. Oh, All of right. Of course. Yeah, we're helping helping get out okay. of the water as fast as possible. We don't know what's up there. Okay. Uh, Thaldor. This water is very cold. You, uh, this is like, uh, uh, this is like a mountain lake that you might find um, in a latitude not too different from uh, where you grew up in Phandalin. Uh, so imagine kind of an alpine lake, and imagine that lake in a fall. So the pretty cold. Temp the temperature of the water is actually probably warmer than the temperature of the air, because you know the water probably still is holding some of the summer heat, but it's it's still a very chilly. Uh, you know maybe. Maybe the summer temperature of the water is something like 65. You know, so it's gotcha. it's it's relatively cold. The air temperature might be somewhere in the um, uh, high 40s, low 50s this morning. Uh, Almost you know, hypothermic. For, well, I mean, you've been in the water for this is. 12 seconds you've been in the water so you're not in any danger yet but you realize yeah i probably don't want to spend a whole lot of time swimming around in the water right uh, yeah so um now you have a choice you can either try to scramble into the same rowboat with your friends or you can since you're a strong swimmer and you're not that far from shore you can try to go back to shore or you can try to get in the rowboat with the fisherman who now just seems to be sitting there dazed. And um, Mulek is back on the shore, kind of just intently looking at him and looking a little bit pleased with himself the way he sometimes <laughs> right. does. Oh, yeah. I see the smirk on his face. Um, yeah. Am I close? To, I'm pretty much close to either rowboat. But yeah. what I was planning on doing was if I throw the burlap sack back in the rowboat with Fallager and Crenray, they can take it back to shore. I'll take the boat with the fisherman. And run it back to shore where Mulek's at. Okay, you climb in the boat, and the fisherman he doesn't he doesn't uh, do anything to respond. He doesn't even kind of look at you as you um, as you climb in the boat, and he doesn't say anything. He doesn't try to um, you know he doesn't try to hinder you. He doesn't try to help you. Uh, he's just sitting there with the fishing pole in his hands. And, um, you know, as you begin to row back to shore, 
the uh you know the line just sort of stretches out behind him and uh you know you can see it making a little wake as it comes towards the uh comes towards the shore all right uh let's go to the other boat uh Kren raid and Fallisher. you have this burlap sack and indeed as you pull it as you pull it in, the squirming around, it's about the size and weight you think of a, of a, of probably a child. And you would guess that from the size of it, if it's human, it's probably something like a, somewhere between a nine and 12 year old child. So it's not like a little baby and it's not like a, you know, a young adult it's just sort of in that sort of tween age years yeah is it moving making noise oh yeah yeah hey help get me out of this get me out of this and I, don't open that sack <laughs> yeah i was thinking now don't open it <laughs> okay we want to we want to leave this and uh, let some of the smart guys deal with this situation let's just get back to shore <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah i mean clearly clearly this this kid has a set of lungs on it but uh and and you know the clearly they're breathing because they can talk um They'll be fine in the sack for a bit. It's just focusing on the on the oars just to go. <laughs> okay, so we don't even need to worry about counting this because everybody is uh, in a safe place. You guys make it back to shore with the. Um, whoops! Uh, you make it back with the one boat and then with the other boat. Okay. And uh, so now you guys have the uh, one boat with the fisherman, the other boat that has the sack in it. And clearly this is, uh, uh, you know, kid uh, jumping around or, you know, trying to squirm in the sack, trying to get out. So what would you guys like to do? Well, I'm curious. I look over at Mulek. Mulek, why? What, maybe we should talk to who's in the sack, but I don't think we should open it yet. Well, uh, so you just came. The guy's still charmed. Uh, yeah. So, he's, he, so I walk up to him and I say, what's your name and why did you throw this child into the lake? And uh, he says, he says, uh, my name, my name is Bluto, Bluto Kargarov. I, I am desperate to catch fish. Hey. No fish in, no fish in over a week. So, I know, I know the girls' people. They are the Vistani. The Vistani are, they are lucky. So I say to myself, I say, Bluto, if you throw the Vistani child into the water, the lake will reward you. We'll give you fish. But. And then he kind of holds up his fishing rod. But still, the lake, he give me no fish. Oh, Bluto's luck is so horrible. <laughs> so as he's, as he's doing that, I looked at others. I go, do you know anything about Vistani? Children, Vistani people. Can I roll his Never dream, maybe? Uh, sure, you can. You can roll history. Can I do as well? Would I to see if even I know anybody? Anybody who wants to can. <laughs> can you ask him where the hell we are? Yeah, I have no <laughs> idea. 
So, <laughs> me and Mueller aren't having good days. Mm. Hey, kid, where are we? That's the properly we'll let you out. Open the sack, let me out, or my father will curse you. We saved you from the water, all right? Clearly, we're not bad people. Just tell us where we are, and we'll let you out. Is that simple? What country are you? Where are we? The town nearby is the town of Velaki. Beyond Velaki, you will you will find my family's camp. Return me there safely. They will reward you. Take this. Take this. Pluto Korgorov, turn him into the authorities at at Velaki. What do you guys think? Have you ever heard of this place? No, uh, I have no, no idea. idea where the hell we're at. I want to do an insight check as he's telling me this. Just see if I can just trust this kid. Okay. Um. For insight, you have to kind of read body language. And oh, right yeah, now, I can't see him. It is inside the yeah, burlap sack, so you can't see him. So yeah, that's true. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to disallow an insight. That's fine. Moment. That's fine. I forgot he was still in the bag. Outdoor things, you know, listening to the kid, we should tie this guy that's charmed up so that when yeah. he comes out of it, he, he can't run. Um, yeah, obviously, he just tried to kill this child. So, right. All right, so we'll tie him up. Okay. And, uh, carefully let this boy out, I guess. Let the kid out. Yeah, carefully. Because be on guard. You know, Thalor okay. likes to walk with his his, uh, his dagger by, by his side, you know, hidden. Yeah. Okay. So you untie the um, sack. And as you do... Uh, as you do, oh, fooey, because I have to go back to this other thing. I have to delete that one. Then I have to go back to this other layer. And I have to bring this over here. And then you see that it is a child who's about, she looks like she's probably about 10 or 11 years old. She's a human. She's got a uh, very, uh, not unnaturally so, but very pale skin and extremely dark hair and dark, almost black eyes. Ugh. And, um, you know, the, the, the brown of her eyes is so, is so dark, it's almost black. And um, she is kind of a she's a wiry kid and she's sort of uh she, she kind of she's dressed you know kind of in kids clothes uh maybe a little bit tomboyish but you know it's not unusual to see uh you know when when girls are going out hiking around things, it's not unusual to see them wearing trousers just like boys would. So uh, she's got kind of a coverall type of thing on with a shirt underneath that and, you know, the, the trousers and everything. And uh, soaked. Uh, her hair is, like I said, black and it's all matted and soaked to her. And then she... She looks at you and she says, Oh, you are not from here. How did you get here? We have no fucking idea. Sorry, I mean, we have no we, idea. We, little we were girl. asking ourselves the same question. And then she looks at you with a knowing smile. Or she looks at you with a knowing smile and she nods her head slowly. She says, Ah, the mists brought you here. They brought you here to save me. So you're saying we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> What's Kansas? 
<laughs> sounds like a bar. Yeah, sounds like yeah, sounds like a little tavern somewhere. I heard of a band named Kansas once. <laughs> oh well. I guess we're not where they're at, is the question. No. This she points back behind her. She says, This is Lake Zerovich. This she points in front of her to the woods. This is the Slavic woods. The town, and she points south up the road. Um, the town there is Velaki. And this valley, and she sweeps her hands around, and you can see kind of as you turn and look slowly, you can see that you are indeed in a valley. And to the north, beyond the woods, there's a jagged range of mountains. Uh, to the south, uh, across woods and looking many miles away, jutting up through some clouds, there is the large white peak of a mountain. Uh, as you look to the east, uh, or no, as you look to the west, you see more woods and then you see sort of a ridge of mountains off to the west. And then as you look to the east, you see in the distance, you see mountains. But closer at hand, you see a large, uh, a large uh, uh, crag uh, plateau of rock that uh, stands up above the uh, clouds. And sitting on top of that large crag of rock, there is a very imposing and dark and heavy looking castle that appears to just look out over, uh, over everything. And she sweeps this all around and she says, this, this valley, this is the valley of Barovia. And you are in the domain of Lord Strad van Zerovich. Does anyone have any idea who that is? Mm. Does, does that name ring a bell? We take a history check. See Another, one. Heard. <laughs> Another one. Another <laughs> one. That's better. <laughs> Mulek with the 21. Mulek. The this you've you've heard the term Vistani now. And now you've heard Strad von Zarevich. And the term uh, and you've heard Barovia. Vistani by itself didn't mean much of anything. But you add that to Barovia and you add that to Strad von Zarevich, and now you begin to remember there are rumors. Rumors told of travelers who disappear and are not heard from again for years, sometimes decades, and then they suddenly return. And they tell stories of a traveling people. Uh, some call them tinkers. Some call them gypsies. Uh, but they give a name that these people give to themselves. They are the Vistani, the traveling people. And they travel to a land where they live in and out of mists. And that land is ruled by a vampire lord named Strad von Zarevich. Hmm. I look at Mulek's face and I see a disconcerting look. I'm like, what? 
Shoot. Uh, mm. So the, boy, the, the, the girl is out standing there, right? Right yes. in front of us. Um, uh, uh, Crane Raid. Uh, uh, do, do you mind uh, staying here? Watch the girl for a sec. Uh, Thaldor, come here. Yeah, sure. Sure. Hello, little sure. lady. And she says, and she says, what are you going to do with this one? He deserves to die. You should, you should either turn him in to the authorities at Valaki, or you should have him come with us to my camp, and my father will deal with him. What is he? Is he a Valaki? No, he's a, he's a drunk villager from, he's a drunk villager. He's right. Nofistani. So and I'll make you a deal. She started you her spits her. on the ground <laughs> at, at the guy's feet. I'll, I'll make you a deal. We take him back to his village and let them sort it out. But in exchange, either you have me or you do it yourself. Punch him really, really, really hard. <laughs> How does that sound, little one? And, um, I've got big muscles. She, she looks at she looks at you and she looks at him and she looks at you and then she gives you kind of this slow wide grin that shows a little too many teeth and uh, she says I want to hear his nose break oh jeez I think that's fair. What do you guys think? Any, any objections? Just yeah, he's charmed. Loud. You hit him. He's gonna. He's gonna come out of his charm. No, it only la- it only lasts a minute. He's probably. Oh, then yeah, yeah, he's, he's yeah. out. Of it. Yeah, right, and, the, and the weird team. and the weird thing <laughs> is, uh, the weird thing is, Mulek, you saw kind of the charm drop away, and he kind of looked around, but he didn't make any move to. I mean, he kind of looks and sees that he's bound and his his shoulders are sort of slump like like almost like oh yeah i should have known this this is how this would end uh he just seems very defeated and you know, he's not struggling or yelling or anything um uh, calling out he just seems he seems like something like a lost soul almost and and when when I would have grabbed Thaldor to like walk, you know, kind of walk to get a little bit of privacy, I I would have done that while Cran is talking to this girl. Okay. Anyway, so, so so Cran will come back to you before you punch the guy. Let's walk away with uh, Mulek and Falager for or the, yeah, yeah Thaldor. Thaldor. Thaldor and Mulek. Yeah, yeah and, and I mean Falager could can can come uh, whatever that Falager wants to do. He could stay or follow with. Uh, I don't I don't care what what Falager does. Okay. I, I'm only. I just called Thaldor because Thaldor asked me the question. So okay, um, all right. Uh, so uh, rumor has it that uh, this Strahd guy is a vampire. Of course, uh, I would know what a vampire is, right, DM? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 guys have heard of of vampires? Okay. Uh, I don't know if I want to get involved with vampires, but. I don't agree with crazy guys just throwing children in the lake, but if this is a daughter of a vampire, she's probably a vampire too. Yeah, that would, that would make sense. Um, Don't, don't know how he got her here. That's a good Uh, question too. But the way she was saying it, she wasn't talking about that. Her father was in the castle said her father was in, some little village or something on the outside of this town and the castles. Yeah. A camp. The castles that way. I think the Oh, did she oh did she way. say that her fa- she didn't say her fa- sorry. No, no, she didn't say no, her father. No, oh, okay, okay. No, no, no. She was no no the keen mind coming on. Gotcha. Uh, she said that her there that her you know, people were in the camp over you know, I would know the direction, so I point it's like that way. So I'm thinking if, you know, we take this guy, he did kidnap her somehow, threw her in a lake. I mean, let them handle, do, yeah. do their justice. You know, that's 
we just saved her. That's on them. So, yeah. and if we do take her back to her family camp, maybe we can get some more intel on what's going on here. Because we're, one, I don't know how we got here. I know you're puzzled just looking at me like, how the hell did we end up in this place? Well, which way is north? Hmm. That way. <laughs> Not as point. We should talk <laughs> to the map. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, wait, north. You always know north, right? You I always do. know the yes, direction. Always know the direction north. <laughs> and always know what time it is. So that's a handy skill to have. Yeah. Actually, from where you guys are standing, north is out across the lake. I should. Yeah. Yeah. That would be. That way. That way. All right. Uh, but I yeah, imagine so, this little girl would also know how to get back to her camp from here if we but, asked. Uh, but yeah, we just, I think we need to be very careful. Oh, I agree. As I twiddle my, 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 my dagger in my fingers. Yeah, I agree. All right. Let's go back. Let's figure out how to get Let's this go. girl back to her family. And ask Fallager too, to, you know, what's going on. He might have, he might, you know, feel something. Hmm. Okay. So does Fallager stop Kren Raid from punching this guy in the face? He kind of deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> Palazur just kind of turns his back like he's looking at the scenery behind him or something. All right, that's not actively stopping. So I'd yeah. like to pick, I'd like to picture like hello friend and then just sock him right in the jaw. <laughs> okay. Um roll a um roll an unarmed attack um to hit. This guy is not actively dodging, so you're not going to have to. Um, you know, okay, that's going to be that's going to be sufficient. Uh, what is your now? You don't have proficiency in unarmed fighting, do you? No, it's the one d four. Okay, so uh, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, wait a second. Let me double check. Um, or is it just one d four? It's usually unless unless you have an unarmed strike as a proficiency like monks do, uh, it's usually just one point plus your strength bonus. Uh, monks okay. get the one d four. It's uh, not an improvised weapon, is it? No. Yeah, so that would be six. Right. So a total of six. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um. Are you punching him for subdual damage, or are you punching him to hurt him? Oh no, I'm punching. I'm punching to hurt him. I didn't like what he did, and I made a deal with this girl. I'm a, I'm a dwarf of my word, and I don't like his face, so I'm going to try and break his neck for his jaw. Well, break his nose for his jaw. So, okay. I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to yeah. kill him by destroying his brain, but I'm going to make him hurt. Okay. Yeah, you're not trying to kill him. But you are not pulling your punch at all. You connect. You hear the snap of his uh, jaw, the snap of his nose, and his head flings to the side at a uh, crazy angle. And then he just sort of collapses and he falls to the ground um, right there. And, you know, he's just at the edge of his shoulder sort of lands in the water. And the girl just looks down at him. And then she looks back up at you and she's smiling. And she says, I think I like you. Uh, well, sometimes, you know, you don't know your own strength, but he... I'm a dwarf, my word. You said you wanted to hear his nose break. I saw no better way. Fallager just turns around. What in the hell are you doing, Kenrad? Well, you know, I kind of made a deal with this lady that she would let us take this guy to his village and, um, you know, deal with it in the village way. In exchange, I hit him as hard as I can and break his nose. Um, turns out, He's a bit weaker jawed than I thought he would be, and I didn't really pull my punch. <laughs> and uh, the, hopefully and, he's still alive. <laughs> and the girl the girl looks at Krenraid and the girl looks at Fallager and the girl looks at um the rowboats and 
and says, "Uh, they're not going to be able to do anything for him. We might as well just put him in the rowboat and let the lake have him. Like he was going to let the lake have me. At this time, I believe probably Mulek and uh, Thaldor walk up and would we hear her say that? Yes. And she's and she's smiling. And it's kind of a disconcerting sort of smile. You little lady, we're going to take him back to your village, as you said, and let them dispense justice their way. Because you said that first. We're not going to just do exactly, you know, this is an eye for an eye. You know, you were saved. We got you out. You know, he's subdued, and apparently his nose is broken now. Way to go, uh, friend Raid. Um, uh, but, take 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 a uh, look at him and give me a perception check, um, Thaldor. Nine. I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's he's kind of laying there. He's laying there very still on the ground, and um. The uh, girl goes over and she bends down and she sort of grabs the guy's head and turns it so that you can look at it. And as she turns it, you realize that his neck is moving in an unnatural way and there's blood coming out of the corner of his mouth and his eyes are just sort of glazed open. Mm-mm-mm-mm. And uh, and and she says, and she says, "You all aren't from around here. I think it would be best if you let the lake have him. Otherwise, you'll have to explain this to the Burgomeister and to Isaac. And Isaac doesn't like strangers very much. Wait, what? How did so Kenrod hit him so hard he killed him? Apparently." <laughs> This is this is a thing now. Yep. I mean this is a commoner. Commoners in five E have four hit points. Right. That was not my intention. <laughs> well, well, exactly. but, well the, but, the, but the girl the girl seems very happy. That's good. <laughs> Kane Raid, what the hell are you doing? You just killed uh, this innocent man. I'm not innocent, but yeah, I really should have pulled that punch. My bad. I kind of agree with the lady. We should put her in the boat. Him in the boat. Oh, you just and, wanna and and she says <sighs> Or or you could come with me to my village. I will explain what happened to my father. My father would have dispensed the same justice as your friend here, she says, pointing to Cranraid. My father will probably have a feast for him. I'd rather not, <laughs> to be honest. This, it was satisfying enough getting a good hit in. Um, and unfortunately, it was a bit too satisfying. Ken Raid, we're going to talk about this later. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to be a part of this. You want to put him in the boat, put him in the boat. I'm putting him in the boat. Yeah, okay. Thaldor is not, not no, uh-uh, no. I mean, I, I didn't want to kill him. I specifically kind of worded it in the main, in a way not to kill him, but I suppose that didn't. So work, knockout so. damage? That was the idea. <laughs> well, I, I asked, I said, are you hitting him to subdue or are you hitting him to hurt him? And I he's like, I'm, I'm hitting I, him to hurt him. I, I yeah. only heard sub, sub, subdual or something. I didn't hear the subdual part, sorry. Well, he's Dead now. I'm dead so. now. So that's what we're working with. So I'm role playing it that way. I'm going to put him in the boat. Okay. You put him in the boat, and the girl stands there and watches. And you push the boat out uh, into the lake, and then she looks south down the road towards the town there, and you can see. Oh, a couple of hundred yards uh, to the south, there is a wooden wall of a town. 
Mm. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a little bit misty, but it's not, not so misty that you can't see that far. Um, and she says, um, uh, that's Falaki. That's where Bluto came from. I suggest you do not go there. Um, Come, I can show you a way around Velaki. Uh, and if you like, you can uh, get a meal at the camp where my family lives. And then you can be on your way. I don't so, like uh, it. For future uh, edification, uh, Gally, what did you say that made it so I killed him instead of just knocking, knocking him out? Because I've never heard that term before. Subdue. I didn't. Hear yeah. That. So subdual subdual damage. Oh, subdual is, damage. Subdual damage is the um, sorry, is the this. damage that uh, you do that is specifically not real hit points. Um, it's the same thing that when you said you hit your head against a tree. I said you did 1d4 subdual damage to yourself. It's it's basically just it if you if you go all the way to zero with subdual damage, you get knocked out. Yeah, I've if only you heard go it all the way to non-lethal, I've never heard it as subdued. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. we're gonna we're gonna rewind. <laughs> what? No, I, I'm fine with it either way. I, well, I, he never he didn't mean to kill him. No. <laughs> so retcon. Yeah, retcon. Oh, Let's go back. Still. still. So he knocks him out. He knocks him unconscious. Like when you say when you say I wanted to hurt him, it's like yeah, I wanted to make you feel it, but I didn't want to fucking kill him. <laughs> then you're subduing him. You're just breaking. Subdual, him. subdual Subdual damage as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Okay. Uh, I let Gary do it. Do we? Do we? Do we all? Are we all really sure we want to do this, or do we want to, um, or do we want to stay with the consequences of? Well, I, 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 I don't mind going back because it Kernry didn't understand what you were asking him, so I don't mind going back to what he thought he was doing. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with rolling back either because if the guy's alive, at least we have leverage. Uh, I mean, I don't even, not, that's not, I mean, yeah, I'd rather just go back to the, with the intended action, not. Not. The, okay. Yeah, what, okay. All right. Your code. Um, not the either way. All right. Well, this is, this is, uh, this is what I like. And um, chat, uh, I enjoy this kind of opportunity because this is the opportunity where the DM gets to let the party pay for consequences now or pay for consequences later. And sometimes letting them pay for consequences later is much more fun. So, uh, yes, let's go ahead and let's just say for the sake of argument that um, we are going to uh, rewind. And in fact, the, uh, in fact, the fellow is not, um, in fact, the fellow is not dead. And uh, he is, uh, he is still, he is just unconscious, but his nose is broken. And so the uh, the girl, she seems satisfied, but does not seem particularly happy. You're a very she, naughty she, girl. She if seems a, a little disappointed. Hey, we had we had a deal. I'd break his nose. He felt pain. Did you not hear his wince? Was that not enjoyable to you? It. You, you did as you agreed. Uh, I will just have to see what my what my father does when I tell him about what Bluto did to me. 
you awesome. would be welcome. You could, you would be welcome at our camp. Um, my father would probably give you drink and food for rescuing me and bringing me back. If you choose to go to the town that is Velaki there, I can find my own way back to my camp. I do not need supervision. No, but I might. <laughs> what you need is someone to bend you over their knee and spank the shit out of you. You naughty girl. You got a mean streak in you. Why, why, did, why did he kidnap you anyways? And one, how did he kidnap you? Hmm. Bluto is a drunk from Benaki. He knows that, well, he has always thought that my father was a friend to him. My father does have a weakness for those, to, for those whose lives are very hard. And Pluto, he has had much misfortune in his life. He, he is always, he is always someone that has my, as my great aunt Eva says, uh, he is always one for whom the cards never have a pleasant fortune. Did she? Have a response to what I said to her. Um. Uh, okay, she is answering the question. Somebody else. Okay. When 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 you when you uh, say that, uh, you tell her that somebody should uh, take her over their knee and spank you. Um, <laughs> let me, let me do this. Well, yeah, I mean, she's got a mean streak in her. It's like, we're, well, okay. Well, what, 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 what would make Fallager say that? Cause I'm not sure. Cause remember none of the stuff of the girl, of the guy dying, that didn't happen. So rewind back to Kren raid punches the well, guy. She, she asked. He falls. Yeah, she asked someone to get their nose broken. I mean, come on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So the guy so just that. tried to the guy just tried to drown her. The guy just tried to kill her. Yeah, well, yeah, this whole place has got Fallas yeah. up in arms. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that it. That is fair. I just wanted to I just wanted to make sure uh, that you know where we were coming from and um, what he was operating off. Uh, I fully support your. I don't know. I, I guess we're all just. Your, we're all just just confused right now, so whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's. Uh, I that's, guess I don't say that. Well, no, no, no. That's fine. That's fine, because it and it makes sense with with you being, uh, with you being a, a you know a holy uh, follower of one of the uh, one of the. Is, okay, so uh, yeah, when uh, when she or when you when you say that somebody ought to spank you, um, uh, she uh, looks at you and she raises a hand. She raises one hand and um, kind of makes a, a little circle with her thumb and forefinger and puts it to one eye. And then oh, she, no. sp she splays her three other fingers and she looks at you and she says, you, you should not talk. And I need you to make me a uh, wisdom saving throw. Why did you insult the creepy little girl? <laughs> God, I was in the middle of. Um, hold on a second. Do 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 do. 
Okay. Uh, what kind of saving throw? Wisdom? Wisdom, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nat you, 20. Nat 20. Hey. Okay. You feel... You feel like there's a... Um, almost like something almost like a a physical force sort of comes over your tongue mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's almost like it's trying to to um, change your speech in some way mm. but then it vanishes and um she she looks at you for another second and then she just puts her head there she puts drops her hand and she just sort of looks at Kren Raid and there's a little bit of disappointment in her eyes and she just sort of shakes her head sadly. Kren Raid waves back. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Are you feeling better? <laughs> Palazur kind of plays along for a second and then he's like Yeah, that that's not gonna work on me. Uh, and you like seeing that, it's just going to say, all right, hold on. Let's go. Everyone needs to s s calm down. Uh, and I look at the little girl, I'm like, is, where is the law in this town? Is there in this area? With the, this Pluto, he lives in Velaki, and she points to the town to the south. And uh, maybe a hundred yards down that road to the south, you can see a wooden wall. Uh, the wall is about 15 feet high, and uh, it says, "You can take, you can take him there. Tell him what he did, and Isaac and the Burgomeister, they will decide the punishment for him." Or you can accompany me back to my village, uh, or no, no, back to back to the camp where my family lives. Uh, tell my father, and he will tell the head of our Vistani troop and the Vistani. They will find Pluto, and they will see that he pays. Either way. He will get justice. Palazur turns to Mulek and he says, I don't like this little girl. I kind of whisper and I say, uh, but I think well, we should follow her back to her family. Well, yeah, after seeing that trick she pulled, it, I think we don't want to get on their bad side. But I don't know. I can't tell who, who runs this place. Um. I don't uh, even know where the hell we're at. Whatever it is, I don't like it. I just listened to the both of you and look and was like, I don't like it. Well, we either turn them over to the town or we take them to her people's village. All I can see is he tried to kill her, but why? Okay, I'm still yeah, trying and to we get don't, you together. And we don't know. Um, he was going to drown her. All he said was is that she's from this little village and they're lucky people. If I would have threw her in the lake, I might be lucky. She says that she knows a lot about this guy, apparently. That's what's even creepier. How does she know so much about him that he always down on his luck and says that her dad knows him or something? Let's just take him back to her village and let them deal with their mm -hmm. justice. That's all I got to say. We'll take, take him to her village. I don't want to be on their bad side. Let them deal justice and they can deal with that other village or whatever. I don't. That's just what I look at. That's my two cents. All right. Okay. I'm trying to so, play patty cake, patty cake with the girl at the moment while these guys are talking. Yeah, and actually, actually, she, uh, she does, she will play patty cake with you, <laughs> and it's um, a, she's actually quite dexterous. Uh, with her hands, and um, you know, she she actually kind of 
for a minute there as she's playing with you, a, a kind of a smile comes across her face that reminds you that this is a kid and it's kind of a kid's smile. And it's sort of the first genuine sort of childlike expression that you've seen from her in the entire time that you've um, dealt with her. Non-creepy, full teeth grin, just a genuine, you know, this is fun. We're having a good time kind of smile. Yeah. Okay. And then she says, uh, after a couple of minutes of that, she will look at uh, the rest of you and she will say, come, uh, I will take you to my family. They will, they will reward you with uh, meat and mead and ale. Um, I like this girl. And uh, you will see the hospitality of the Vistani. Alice, you're just going to squint at her when she's not looking. And so where where we're going to end is we're going to end with, uh, we'll say, probably because of the strength, well, well two, two of the humans, and you guys can figure out who that is, two of the humans will get Bluto and drape one arm over, you know, around each of your necks, and you'll start to walk with him. And she will start to lead you to the east along the shore and sort of around this uh, around this uh, patch of wood. And um, that's where we will end for tonight. All right. And viewers, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, we have, in fact, uh, changed storylines again. And we are now in the land of Barovia. Uh, and we will see what happens to our uh, intrepid adventurers there. Uh, they will get to talk to some Vistani and perhaps talk to some townsfolk next time on the Sword Coast Chronicles. Players... Thank you guys so much for uh, coming and hanging out with us. And um, uh, let me ask, uh, let me ask Paul, mm -hmm. uh, what is, is there anything special going on between now and next Thursday that you would like the uh, viewers to know about? We got a nice, nice chat room tonight. Thank you guys. Um, probably the accent surge again. Uh, this is a okay. kind of dungeon crawl that happens uh, every Wednesday. Um, we've got one coming up on Wednesday the seventeenth, which I uh, will be in. It's on, I think, seven CST. Okay, uh, it's a pretty fun experience. You have to try and beat some high scores. There are certain obstacles you have to clear and things like that. There's like a ranking and a leaderboard and things like that. The viewers can put in commands to influence the dungeon to give people like magical items or to spawn a monster or as many like to do force people to draw from the deck of many things that's so much fun <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 uh, it is the main reason i'm starting it out is because it, they put a lot of effort into what they're doing so they deserve the they deserve the recognition other than that come back gally's awesome the next one's on sunday right gally Yes, the well. Actually, we have uh, uh, we're wrapping up the Lost Mine of original D and D on Saturday night, and then we have our planeswalking game on Sunday afternoon. So all the times are on my Twitch slate: um, seven thirty p.m. Eastern Saturday night, two p.m. Eastern on Sunday. And just a reminder for Ken, who plays in the Sunday game. Um, and for anybody else, this is the weekend in the U.S. that daylight savings time begins. So uh, it'll be two o'clock on the clock on Sunday, but it's going to feel like one in the afternoon for all of us. So uh, it'll feel like it's an hour earlier because the clocks spring forward um, this time. All right. And uh, then... Michael, what is happening over on Doors of Fear, uh, the Doors of Fear Twitch channel between now and next Thursday? Huh. 
Um, well, if I have time, I'm just playing just any assortment of random game if I have time. Um, I think I've already hit level 100 in Fortnite, but I might play some more Fortnite before the 16th. Um, especially because that's when season six starts. Um, and I'll, I'll probably end up playing some Raft or some other games with my friends, maybe Sea of Thieves. That's about where it's going right now. Oh, okay. Okay, wonderful. Uh, then let's go ahead and do this. Mm. Why did I do that? Come on. Uh, there you go. All right. Uh, now, uh, what I would uh, like to do is I'd like to go ahead and find somebody from Game Rebel that we can raid. Um, somebody who's playing uh, Phasmophobia, uh, Surviving Mars. Uh, interesting. That's a great game. I, I have that game. Oh, too, Surviving my Surviving okay. Mars. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, it's then, a builder game. Mm. then what we will do is we will go ahead and we will raid Ender Hall. So, um, chat. Thank you guys again for hanging out with us and uh, we're going to send you over to Ender Hall's channel. Tell him that we said hello. Uh, hope you guys have a great week and we will talk to you again next Thursday night for the next edition of the Sword Coast Chronicles. Bye. 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 See ya. Okay. And... Yeah, sorry about the confusion there, guys. It's my bad. No, that's all right. That's <laughs> all right. All of us for a loop. We're like, wow, yeah, fuck, what are we doing? For a loop as well. Like, I, I, I've never had that uh, that experience, so it's, it was new like, to me. I'm sorry. Galley Bomb makes me feel like a pervert or something. I'm like, ah, what are you doing, Galley? <laughs> oh, no, no. You wanted to 